Where's my dentures? Where is the podcast? Oh. Hurry the fuck up, Tyler. I want to play Final Fantasy VII. I'm ready. Well, we're recording, okay. and I am not playing right. Final Fantasy VII. All right, ready? Wait, wait. Okay, go. Mm-hmm. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hair of the Dogcast, your favorite dogcast about beer and video games and video games and beer and keeping these two men away from rebirth as long as I possibly can. There are other dogcasts. They're mostly about dog care. I've looked into. I've looked really? into it. Yeah, there is really. The, yeah, there's like the dog cast, and then there's like hair of the dog podcast, and they they drink as well. I thought I, you were I don't want to uh, cast aspersions, but I think we're probably cooler. I thought you were going to like explain to me like the multiverse theory. <laughs> like I thought you were going to be like. There's one where we're all sober. There are many dog casts out there. Like Some of them one. more sinister than the others. I'm Brad. <laughs> I'm Dylan. I'm Tyler. I'm Justin. Wait, who the fuck is that? Who the fuck is Justin? It's not important. You don't need to know. Who invited you? No, I'm uh, (laughs) Tyler's little brother. That's how you introduce yourself at clubs, right? Yeah. You have your own. You have your own things you're doing. Yeah. What do you do for fun, Justin? Do you do you like do an instrument or something? Aren't you the cool one? I do an instrument every once in a while. I play an instrument on stage every once in a while in a band. Skin flute. Yeah. You play nice. skin flute. I specialize in the skin bad. flute. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And the guitar. I do, I do a little music every once in a while. And I like to play my fair share of video games. Excellent. Well, he's not going to shout it out, but Justin's band, Well and Good, had their one year birthday party last well night. Well plus Bremen. good. Ooh. Well sure. plus good. Well yes. plus good. It's well plus good. I know sure. how to read. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. Yeah, Sorry, it's I couldn't been a long make it. time coming. About 365 days. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah that tracks. Uh, our first beer we're, we're drinking today from Ryan is, uh, thank you, Ryan. Uh, this is the Black Quad Quadrupella Trappist Inspired Ale with a delicious <laughs> dark side, much like Dylan. Oh, you nail on that. One head. side's dark, the other one's darker. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Ten and a half percent. It's from Real Ale Brewing, which is an interesting name. What's what's the brewery? Real Ale. That's interesting. Believe us, ale. <laughs> Believe us, it's real. <laughs> wow, it's a uh, robust. I'm getting mm. turkey vibes from it. Turkey. I don't know. Turkey. If, are you getting turkey? like a smoky kind of meat flavor afterwards? <laughs> I get wow. smoky. I get maybe yeah. like the, the. I do m- sense a bit of smoke. Maybe, maybe the malts maybe are not smoked. Turkey. I, don't, I yeah. think more ham than turkey. Brad, why are you making me look at Dakota Johnson? All like she's just looking at me. I get, we were on the way out of the theater after seeing Drive Away Dolls, Ethan Cohen's new film, which is mm-hmm. very good. Yeah, and there's free Madam Web posters, and I wasn't gonna not take a free Madam Web poster. Are, are we yeah. hanging it? No, I figured we just sat on the table and look at it for a while and throw it away in two weeks. Can I cut holes in the eyes and then just be Dakota Johnson? Well, then we'll also put it up on a door and we'll make holes in the door so you actually look through the eyes. (laughs) It's for people. Yeah. Yeah. uh, This is the dog cast. Yes, it's the dog cast. Are we ready for some news? Absolutely. All right. Well, first up, uh, I was not going to talk too much about uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree because we did do uh, we did do a break. we did a dog cast breakdown of the entire trailer. We did so Elden Dog's ninety minute episode breaking down the trailer. Yeah, so Dylan, you would have hated it. Oh, I would have. I would have fallen asleep. I, uh, but I, I mean, if you want to hear about our opinions on that, I mean, we could ask Dylan. I want to hear Dylan's opinions on the trailer. I didn't watch the trailer. You didn't even watch it. No, Damn. I didn't watch it. No, it's supposed to be. Uh, they're calling it the the sec. Sekiro DLC we never got. Oh. Uh, okay. Because of the way they're doing the leveling system, right, Brad? The leveling, there's a new leveling system that's Good. supposed to be more akin to Sekiro. That's cool. And he has spoken about how the locations and dungeons in the world map are all interconnected in a way that's way more meaningful. Oh, thank fuck. So I think a la Bloodborne, Sekiro. Dark Souls, Sekiro. Yeah. So uh, we're excited. Yeah. I mean, um, I'll play it when it comes out. I just have to get my bearings back in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's probably one of the bigger news things, but like I said, we did a whole 90 minute episode on it. So if you want to check that out, uh, it's on Patreon. Is it on Spotify yet, Brad? Yeah, it's on everything. Yeah, it's on everything. Go, to, go listen to that. That it's, one's available immediately. Uh, 
because the trailer speculation wouldn't be as interesting in six months when it would have came out for non Patreon mm-hmm. listeners. They would have been like, wow, these guys were way wrong. Or super right. I think we were pretty much right. I think, yeah. Um, so, in actual news that we haven't covered yet, uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth is out. And Wait, what? I missed it. <sighs> Final Fantasy Seven uh, Rebirth. Oh. So, what's the third one going to be called, Dylan? Resurrection. Resurrection. <laughs> so it's Final Fantasy Seven, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth, and well, Final, Final Fantasy Seven Remake, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth, Final Fantasy Seven it's gonna Reimagined. Be it's going to be Resurrection. No, but. it's got to be Re something. Yes, Rebirth is out. And yes, and there was a little mix up with the Japanese copy of the games. I heard um, about this due to a manufacturing error. Physical editions of Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth in Japan contained discs that were misprinted, so the data disc and the play disc were swapped. It's not a huge deal, but people could it's a, have... It's a pretty embarrassing mistake. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, that's kind of an oversight. Yeah. Um, for people who... Do, I mean, it's been like this since the PlayStation 3, right, where we've been installing games to consoles. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Back in the day, you used to be able to just pop a disc in and play, but having the discs it's called. Well, we up, still can with Nintendo, at least. It's not mm-hmm. a disc, but, dude, you put a cartridge in you are playing that immediately i'm gen alpha and i don't know what you guys are talking about i don't even know what gen alpha is i'm like younger than gen z how old are you mm-hmm. are you 16 dylan this many <laughs> <laughs> right? it's like a clockwork orange and they reveal alex was 13 the whole time <laughs> yeah it's funny it's you know my alien species we just you know we develop quicker <laughs> Uh, despite the mix-up, uh, people figured it out pretty quickly, and things are running smoothly now. Uh, it seems to just be Japan that was really affected, but the game yeah. is out and re- getting rave reviews as far as I've seen. I haven't gotten it yet, but yeah. you're playing it. We can talk about that when we get to what we're playing. Okay. Um, keeping on the physical train, yes, uh, Baldur's Gate is getting a deluxe uh, physical copy edition okay whatever uh but yeah. they are saying all right so it's going to come out for pc playstation 5 and xbox i heard that the xbox is getting a lot the xbox is getting four discs apparently at this point yeah the that's going to be a thick box no it won't that's what they're they're calling it a thick box uh well final fantasy it'll have like a little folio in it i think it was 13 had like three yeah. discs or something and they're all in just a regular size they they don't sit well in the case but it's no. a regular case yeah yeah, uh, that's funny. Yeah, um, but it's right now it stands that PlayStation 2 is getting two, PC is getting two, Xbox for some reason is getting four, and uh, people are making memes about uh, the sexual endeavors you can pursue in the game uh, using an Xbox box that's really thick. Oh. Saw them on Reddit. They're pretty funny. You can look them up if you'd like. We watched on Need for Speed Running the other day. We did Baldur's Gate 3, and there's actually a sex percentage. And you can uh, fornicate within four minutes of playing the game. Yeah. Asterion? Lays out. Lays out. Lays she's, out. Down, she's down to clown. Yeah, yeah I figured right it'd away. be Asterion. They, they changed it, though, because before, uh, Larian had it set up to where people were pretty much immediately like, hey, what's up? And you didn't have to get to know them at all. So they changed where you had to spend a little time getting on their good side. And then they're like, hey, what's up? Is it like a Tinder side quest? No, it's like every time you just go to the camp with your party, someone's like, oh, darling, you look ravishing. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. That's all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. I I like that you could also just make the ugliest character ever. And Asterion's (laughs) like, oh, wow. Yeah. Beautiful. You are the fattest gnome I've ever seen. Justin has absolutely zero desire to play Baldur's Gate 3, no matter how much I pester him. You'd like to, it. Uh, I just don't know. I just don't know. He's more interested in the working of a famous football player in uh, Madden. Tom I don't know. Brady. I was going to make a reference, and I just knew, realized I couldn't make one. He had Tom Brady locked and loaded. Tom Brady, yeah. I love that man. Really? Yeah. You have that framed got well, milk poster he did where he's just got the milk mustache in your bedroom? I have everything he's ever done. Whoa, that's really strange. That's impressive. Yeah, it's in my bedroom. Um, one thing Justin's really excited about, and something that I want to talk about because it is in the news, is Hell Divers Two is just absolutely bananas right now. It's, it's a very one popular of the, game. Well. One of the best games I've played in a long time. Really? Justin and I it's, have been playing every night. What is yeah. it like? Uh, online uh, team-based gameplay, four <laughs> v enemy, four uh, v PVE. 
um, with nine ranging difficulties that get pretty fucking hard. Um, I'm about 11 hours in. Justin's slightly less than me. We're like, what, level 10? I am uh, level 8. I think you're level 10. Yeah, but we are having a really good time playing that. Um, the In the first two weeks, uh, Steam had, f- was it 40,000 or 400,000 concurrent players at once on just Steam? I think it was 40. And they raised the cap for the servers up to 70 because they were literally on fire. I don't know. Why do you but. think this game popped off the way it did? Because I'm a little confused. I don't know. Uh, well, the I've never game, even heard of Helldivers 1. No. Helldivers 1 was like a top-down strategy game, it looks like. This is a third-person shooter. Like Go? Like Go, yeah. Okay. A lot like Go. Nice. Um, no, Helldivers, I think, popped off because it's scratching an itch for a lot of people who want to play online games. And right now, unless you're playing like Fortnite or Call of Duty or any of those other big like online games like Diablo or something. There's not a lot of like shooters, online shooters that you can and play the with fact, some pals, you know? There's there, you're saying that there's not enough online shooters no, you can play like, with. Friends? Nothing <laughs> nothing like new and exciting. Okay. You know? And hmm. it also helps that this is a PvE game. Uh, friendly fire is on and you will get some toxic randoms that jump in and try to kill you. Like but, your brother? No, we work as a unit. We yes. are Okay. We do occasionally kill each other on accident. Me more so than him. Mm. Yeah. I have a grenade who's, launcher though. Who's, who's better? <laughs> Me, for sure. Dude, I get more kills than you every single time. No, you don't. Well, in kills, it's the spread, it's the KD ratio. Also, <clears> my <throat> accuracy is through the roof. That's because you use a marksman rifle and I'm rocking a grenade launcher. How hmm. embarrassing. I know. Yeah, but, precision's way more difficult yeah. to do. I, uh, <laughs> Helldivers is You're like a bull in a china shop, dude. Dude, I am. And that's why, pe- that's why the people love me on super earth i'm a hero um no i brought that up because uh it has been revealed so helldivers 2 has uh one man behind the entire thing essentially uh oh yeah he's entertaining uh when helldivers 2 players first jumped into the third person co-op shooter they believed that they were cleansing the galaxy of terminids a bug species with a fierce hold on a number of systems soon after though the robot automatons entered the fray splitting the helldivers forces across war on two fronts uh so essentially when you jump into the game there's a big menu and you have the automatons on one side the terminids the bugs on the other and they slowly creep in and try to take super earth and you'll have defense campaigns and it feels like D. and that's because it is uh there is a man named joel and they just don't talk about it the no. last of us Are you no doing- no 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 i did have last of us news and i scrapped it because they cast it oh now you have to tell people about it i still brought it up regardless Mm -hmm. no joel is a developer at arrowhead game studio who is behind the he's essentially playing dungeons and dragons with the entire community by orchestrating orders for you to go attack other planets and they have given him essentially 100 percent free range control to create a non-linear storyline throughout the online uh portion of the game which is the entire game but I think that's fucking incredible that one dude is in charge of maintaining the orders and keeping the automatons or the terminids at bay because he will up the difficulty or down the difficulty depending on how close they are getting to Super Earth. And apparently he has like actual narrative beats that he is attempting to hit. He's a dungeon master. Yes, he is essentially a DM. Hmm. And he has said that he will wake, he'll wake up in the middle of the night to check the game and adjust the automaton's difficulty or the termini- Terminid's difficulty based on how good or bad the player base is doing. And I feel like, Justin, that's why sometimes we run through a mission on Challenging we're like, that was super yeah, easy. Super and then easy. the next game, you just get destroyed. That's okay. awesome. That's great. I like yeah. variable difficulty. It, it, it's a lot <laughs> of fun, yeah. Because um, even like when it gets difficult, Tyler and I are still able to get through it, but it's just... Uh, you know, obviously a lot more challenging, and it just uh, spices it up a little bit and keeps it interesting. I mean, you never know what you're going to get when you play. It's the new hotness. People um, are raving. A lot of people are. Is it forty dollars worth of hotness? Oh, oh yeah. it's. Yeah. it's yes. I mean, it, I'm I'm not going to have a chance to play it for hmm. ten years. That's true. We'll do it as a retro game. Great. Um, <laughs> no, it's a lot of fun. I do think it's kind of cool that one dude is kind of pulling the strings on it and changing the way the game works. So it's not just a rinse and repeat, uh, same thing over and over. Um, you really feel like you're kind of winning or losing depending on where the war is at. But I thought that was pretty neat. 
Yeah. Um, I, don't I, guess, know, I don't know if you want to mention in the news, but isn't aren't they adding more enemies soon? Uh, theoretically. Or the, rumors? Rumors. Mechs are going to be involved in the game. Um, is Peter Griffin going to be in the game? Yes. No. Yeah, I actually Buff heard about Peter that. Griffin. Because then I, I'd check it out then. Can you do that again for me, please? Oh, Peter. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> I'm Stewie. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it too. <laughs> you can do Meg. I was listening to Real Lich Hours, the Baldur's Gate podcast, and Cole Ross was like, all I hear out of Asterion's mouth is Stuart Griffin. <laughs> and it's kind of made me feel differently about both of those characters now. I can't do Meg. I don't watch Family Guy. Fair enough. That's, that's not what the giant poster was. Uh, giggity, says. giggity. Oh, sweet dude. Yeah. <laughs> he nailed it. Giggity, giggity. <laughs> um, speaking of calling to arms, seeing as though everybody is running into hell diving, uh, did you guys see that the Peoria, Illinois Police Department put their foot in their mouth or in their butt? I don't know. They made a Like a baby really, does? The Peoria, Illinois Police Department made a poster, and it is receiving a lot of backlash on Twitter and Reddit. It is three cops pointing their gun at the camera and full decked out tactical gear sounds awesome and it's it Dude. says something I want him to, to sign end. it for me it's a bad poster i i'll see if i can google it real quick what, too is, is this video games yes because they are trying to capitalize on the call of duty crowd and it says put down the controller and answer the call of duty and they used the same call of duty font and it's three cops in tactical gear pointing the guns at the camera and people are getting really upset saying that it sends the wrong message which i, I can wholeheartedly actually agree. it sends the message that they absolutely want to send yeah yeah do you want uh unchecked power where you can be total douchebag a fascio military police state something we all want it's actually really good marketing for what they're trying to accomplish but they use the don draper would approve they use the actual call of duty (laughs) font (laughs) wow it's bad it looks like a uh a dvd you'd get for like two bucks at a thrift store Um, it says, stop playing games and answer the Call of Duty. Join you wanna, PPD. You want to know what it needs? A chubby Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He'll get his own game eventually. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how much news you talk about without talking about the biggest story of the month. There's like one story that's just uh-huh. way bigger than all of this. If, is, it a, a, is it attached to Microsoft? It's it's about all games, all companies. The fact that Microsoft exclusives are going to be available on PlayStation? No. Dude, uh, 7,800 employees have been laid off. Oh, yeah. That's my next. Okay. I, I, was, I was, wasn't sure if you were going to have it on well, there. Well, I started with the super massive layoffs, and then there's a whole list of there's a layoffs lot. now. It's, uh, Sony's laying off an entire fucking studio. Super massive is cutting 30 people. Which one did you pick up? Well, um, according to the site Game Industry Layoffs, which tracks public layoff announcements, uh, 7,800 employees have been let go across a lot of companies. EA, 670. Microsoft, 2,000 across Xbox, Activision, Blizzard, and ZeniMax. Riot, 500. Sony, 900. Closed PlayStation, London. Unity, 1,800 people. Roughly 25% of their company. Uh, Embracer uh, has let go of 1,400 people. Uh, and they're also selling off some of their studios that they've recently uh, acquired. Uh, it's like uh, huge. The, yeah. the gaming industry is going through like a, a huge shakeup right now. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to get into next because I had uh, not all of them broken down quite like that. But Supermassive is laying off 30% of their staff. Um, it, this is a little bit of Spartacus news, but it's... Related, so I'll throw it in here. Uh, On last Tuesday morning, Sony revealed that it is laying off uh, workers at Insomniac Games, Guerrilla Games, Naughty Dog, and Fire Sprite. Uh, The biggest cut, though, is the London studio is being closed entirely. The entire layoff is supposed to lay off 900 people or 8% of Sony's workforce. They... Some of like the high ups went to PlayStation London like a week before and took pictures with the staff. This, yeah, he was the it's, CEO was there. It's really bad optics. Yeah, yeah. I wait a week before and then yeah, it's like hey, off. just There's thought like, I'd stop by and see my favorite studio. You guys making games again? You're fired. It's, <laughs> I wonder if there's like a weird because like they say CEOs are kind of like sociopaths, right? You have to have they a little are. bit of a sociopath gene to be a like cutthroat ceo i wonder if it's like 
going to visit the victim before you murder them. It's less sociopathy and more actual psychopathic traits. You think he's going back to the studio and like revisiting the crime scene? Walking around in the empty cubicles and yeah. just like smelling mugs. There were so many nerds here last week <laughs> and now they're gone. I could, there's still game fuel sitting on the desk. It's got sweat on it. <laughs> they still, were just here. Oh God, it's still sweating. <laughs> it's still good. And then there's someone going around and like finishing every single one. <laughs> there's still sweat on the game fuel. <laughs> um, video game developers do not uh, certain companies have unions or is it region based because I started looking into it and union talk even though I was in one at the airlines it's like lawyers speak to my brain mm -hmm. so I was curious if either of you two know it sounds like um, with the stuff that was going on with uh, I think you can form unions pretty much in any type of corporate structure if, as long as you have the support of and, all the workers. And then it could be like a Starbucks-specific union. Yeah. Or there's like the electrician unions. There's a few different unions I could join as an electrician in Wisconsin. But it'd be like Wisconsin-based union. Uh, I, I know that some game studios have unionized. It's... Uh, so you have to do it by the studio? Because I know in Poland... It and depends on the countries, too. I mean, because all of these countries, different studios, laws. different laws... Uh, I'm sure Tencent can't unionize. I'm not in a union. I want to be, but whatever. Um, you yeah. didn't hear this, employers. Not from me. <laughs> it's just, it's weird that PlayStation... Your would... boss is listening right now so mad. Oh, I don't give a shit. They can fire me. I'm, I'd be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we can't fire him. He'd be fine. Now yeah, we're not going to fire him. They just want to hurt my feelings and they can't touch me. Yeah. They can't get at this. You know what I mean? We can't get after it. No, man. You never get this. La, 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 la. I got oh, Borat. Oops. Family I got Guy and Borat. Wow, we're really... Uh, I got fired yeah. from a shenanigans. I was a cook when I was like 17. What kind of shenanigans were you up to? Well, the the restaurant. But I, um, I went in to grab uh, something I left at work, and then the bartender served me a beer. Oh. And I'm like, okay, you're giving it to me. And then the next day, the boss like called me in. He's like, I'm super sorry, Brad, but... He showed the video, and he's like, what do you have to say about this? I'm like, I don't really care. I hate this job. <laughs> <laughs> and he was really, like, expecting it to be this tough talk. And I was like, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I've had that happen. We're sorry, Brad. You're just not shooting against the material. I'm like, this place sucks, dude. <laughs> you have a 17-year-old who doesn't know how to cook making steaks for people. Oh, God. They were no. bad. Oh, boy. Yeah, they were bad. They After that, they put me on the fryer. <laughs> like, I would I would have uh, been gone regardless. <laughs> Brad um, keeps burning the French fries. <laughs> you know, the French fries are coming out with half as many fries as they're supposed to would be the problem. And you're doing that trick where they put all this, you put it, you know, like the trick where they uh, see how many cigarettes they can fit into their mouth. It's just you with French 32, fries. 32, 33. <laughs> Crispy. <laughs> it was Shamrock Shuffle yesterday. Oh, God. One, it's a minor tangent. We went to Camino. Yeah, where? and Shamrock Shuffle. For those that are not in Milwaukee, it's a horrible uh, bar crawl. Yeah. Everyone wears the same fucking green shirt. And some when we left Camino, someone was hosing down the sidewalk. I'm like, oh, what happened? They're like, it looks like a Fat Tony happened out here, which is the name of one of their sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, that's all. That's my tangent. Our uh, um, well, going off of Shamrock Shuffle, uh, we had our our uh, one year anniversary show last night, and our Drummer did the Shamrock Shuffle no. before he was, beforehand. That's he was a big mistake. MIA. He missed sound check <laughs> oh, because I didn't we know that. could not get a hold of him. He That's was amazing. dead asleep at his house. Listen, so, you it, gotta you gotta tell him about a few famous <laughs> drummers by the names of Keith Moon, mm -hmm. John fucking Bonham. John Bonham. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta Led Zeppelin and the Who. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta fucking because that they died. Doing they what died. your friend did. Yeah. Yeah. My Soon friends. you're not going to have a drummer, and that, then you're going to have to get a monkey playing the bongos. Just get, just get hit oh. a button in the background. It's the same yeah. thing. It's also slightly, it's good. Also slightly related to, well, it's not slightly, yeah, it's slightly related to the layoffs. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 is ramping up production. They are talking about being in the final phases, which means crunch is inevitable for Rockstar as much as they might deny that it happens there. 
Um, a new report came out that says Rockstar Games is entering the final stages of production, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but starting in April, everybody has to come to the office five days a week. They want butts and seats. Mm-mm. And at first, this didn't really seem like a huge deal to me because I don't work from home. So it doesn't really register. But this is a, this is a big deal because it's either uh, it's a good way to say you either show up or don't. You're fired, sort of. Hmm. Well, because yeah. they have to have employees all over the place, right? Mm, they want to justify the office spaces that they bought that are no longer useful based on evidence. You know, that seems like a tricky industry to have working remote with uh, leaks and maintaining data getting mm. sent across computers and networks. That it's, seems just dangerous. It's well, honestly a lot easier than you think. To keep because you just put it into secure. a folder that says they're all uh, don't open. They're going through no, zip, they're going through their own like clients that have file. their own like shields and walls. It's the same thing with like uh, even the company I work for. Like all the my access to like the system itself is like contingent based upon its own network. So yeah. I don't know. It's probably I'm saying some companies I used to work for. I still have access to all of their shit. And they don't know. I haven't. I just looked at it the other day. I'm like, oh. They should remove my email from access to this. <laughs> well, that's exactly what it's fun. Uh, Bloom- yeah. Bloomberg reported that on the 28th, the head of publishing, uh, Jen Colby, uh, sent out the email and it was saying that the mandate came down to producti- productivity and security issues that she feels people will be more productive in office and it's easier to stop the leaks. And as we know, Rockstar had some ma- a few massive leaks in the last year, yeah, uh, leaking pre-alpha footage of the game and then the massive uh, Rockstar leak that just happened a couple months ago. But Twitter is, uh, is on a rampage. Or X, I guess it is now, calling the return to Twitter on a rampage. That's screwed cool a thought. That's way weird, dude. Oh, no. dude, someone's got opinions. Is you it, better watch out. Is it? <laughs> is it trend? Is it trending? Uh, it was. I think Whoa. I'm not on X, but according to the article I read, it was a big deal. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, you know, wow. Bungie, uh, I'm, I'm afraid. Moment of silence. A former Bungie employee tweeted: "Remote workers are effectively told move or quit." Headline should be Rockstar lays off all remote workers. Uh, a lot of the workers have said that being able to work from home post COVID has been a godsend for family, kids sort of reasons. It's easier to work and be home with your kids. Great and having news. to go into the office would be an easy way for Rockstar to effectively lay off without laying off. So it mm-hmm. looks like it's yeah. trying to be like a little bit of a sneak attack sort of way that mm-hmm. they don't have to. It's call. like, hey, we'd love to keep you, but if you can't make it in. Then you're done. Mm, you're and out. after a very long time of people, you know, forming their life around the ability to work from home, hmm. it, it does seem like a kind of a, I mean, I get having to people come into work, but it, it just also it's, feels kind of shitty given what's going on in the, in the video game world with all the layoffs. It seems like it's a way to kind of skirt that, in my opinion, by saying, well, you are failing to live up to your yeah. work duties, so we have to let you go. Um, I, I, I think it's scummy on its head. Um, you cannot set up like a new expectations and a new reality and then pull the rug out whenever you want, just because you believe your workforce is beholden to you. I think it's really, really shitty because people live their lives a certain way and people have their routines. And part of what keeps people happy in society is having a routine and having the ability to understand what's going on in their lives at any given moment. When you up, when you toss that into confusion, if these are creative people, which I know they are, that's fucking up. That, cu- that fucks up everything down the line. Mm-hmm. It's going to affect the final product, which is the game that, you know, most of the world is extremely excited for, but I am very milk toast on. I, it's just, Me it's too. just going to affect, it's just going to affect the final product. It's and it's, it's not, it's only going to make a thousand billion dollars. Happy, instead of happy, devel- billion happy developers dollars. make fantastic games. It's been proven. Look yeah. at FromSoft. And that goes without. I mean, it doesn't even have to be game developers. But if you look at any place that I've ever worked, places that treat your employees like people and with compassion and respect, right. you're going to get the best work out of them. The sure. overbearing helicopter managers that I've had, I couldn't have told them to go fuck themselves any harder than yeah. I did, and they received the bare minimum of what I thought was appropriate for my pay scale. Um, but yeah, you were just, correct to do so. Yeah. 
uh, work as much as you're paid to work. Don't clock in off. Don't work off the clock and fucking love yourself. Due to layoffs as well. Uh, Respawn's first person Mandalorian game they were working on has been canceled. Good riddance, I guess. The bounty hunter one. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, fine. But it's Star Wars game. Battlefront Classic Collection. Let's go. Cool. I yep. actually like those games. So they they are better, and it's cool that they're going to be available on all the consoles with 64-player online. I used to play a lot of those games. Yeah. It's like a toy box. It's like playing with your toys. Yeah. Yeah. And you can up the difficulty. And, and then the fact that it's going to be 64-player online, very cool. I'd play with you guys. Can I mention something else about online gaming? Mm-hmm. Did you have Suicide Squad in your your news at all? Uh, like the fact that the Joker is the next playable character and that it's a, the it's fact, a dog shit game. The fact that player count for Steam has dropped so much it is frequently lower than Gotham Knights. Oh, that's terrible. Ooh. One day they had a peak player count of 593. Whoa. That's bad. It's very bad. And they're talking about how uh, the D- some of the DLC is probably going to get canceled. It Warner Brothers to. is not going to put money no. into this mm-hmm. if it's not worth it. And yeah, it's done. It's amazingly bad. Uh, yeah. What is the name of the developer too that made that? Rocksteady. Rocksteady. Batman. I, yeah. I mean, it's such a shame to go from. I mean, yeah. I was a little lukewarm on <laughs> Arkham Knight, but to go from that Batman trilogy to Suicide Squad, it's like the <laughs> fuck happened. Batman made it. <laughs> it's from made the game. It's from, ba- it's from, it's from it's Batman. It's from Batman. All the villains happen because of Batman. It's true. And then uh, I also wanted to mention uh, Skull and Bones is doing pretty bad. Oh, yeah. I, I watched an extensive gameplay. I watched a donkey video about it. <laughs> I think his name is Luke Stevens. Is yeah, the, yeah. I watched a video of right. him playing it. I have not even looked at it because I'm so upset that they made a pirate game that I don't want to play at all. Yeah, that was a, that should have been a slam dunk for you. They made it for eleven years. Shit. It was originally going to be a Black Flag DLC. Black Flag uh, player counts has gone up through the roof, though, and people are talking about it as if like it's a new game. And people are like, "Yeah, it still looks great. It's so great. We'll love this game." Yeah, and it, then Skull yeah. and Bones. Yeah, the, there's like we're reaching record amounts of players. Yeah. It's like you had a free eight hour demo, dude. They didn't say how many games they sold, Mm-mm. and the fact that the studio head came out was like, "This is a quadruple A game." It's like. No. Go, go fuck yourself, man. <laughs> yeah. It looks the some of the character textures look like they're from PlayStation 3. Like the facial models, they look bad. Well, yeah. like the fact that the, that's a long time ago too. His clothes mostly. 3. Oh yeah, that was his yeah. hair looks fun though. <laughs> so weird. Um before we get to uh console critters cuz I do have a little bit more Sony news. Um Miyazaki spoke on Bloodborne. Yeah. I'm sure you saw that, Brad. Yeah. Um, you know, I, he said something else recently too. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. No, I was talking specifically. Like he enjoys the fact that we all like Bloodborne. Um, I like that you like my stuff. Yes, but weird I did controversial not know. opinion. <laughs> and a quote from Miyazaki when asked about like a Bloodborne remake. Unfortunately, and I've said this in other interviews, it's not in my place to talk about Bloodborne specifically. We simply don't own the IP at From Software. Um, that's crazy. It turns out that. Sony's now defunct first party developer Japan Studio had a major role in the development of Bloodborne, according to an IGN documentary. On the development of the game, Japan Studio bought, brought the idea of Bloodborne to From Software and Miyazaki with hopes of collaborating. So that was kind of a bummer. It makes a, it makes a shitload of sense because 2014 was Dark Souls 2, 2015 was Bloodborne, and then 2016 was Dark Souls 3. So those were all developments happening simultaneously. There's no way one company could have just pumped out all of that. On yeah, their own. that's actually true. Yeah. He also said Miyazaki recently that he's considering not directing games anymore and Fair just enough. being a the studio head and a producer. And he can do whatever the fuck he wants. He has earned that. Um, but that is like a bummer when one of your favorite hmm. creators is. But it's fine. Uh, It's also just like, uh, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, well, Mm -hmm. I mean, Dark Souls 2 was great, and that wasn't really directed by him. And I think it might also be like the other Miyazaki who said he's going to take his hands off uh, Heyao. And he's like, I'm going to retire. And he's unretired three times. I know. Just fucking. But the most recent movie, Boy in the Hair, and he let a lot of people do things without him, and he did like more supervising. So he's he's, he's got his fingers off more, and maybe that's. He'll die with a pencil in his hand. That's just how he is. And then a knife to his son's throat saying, do better. <laughs> well, 
Tales from yeah. Earth C was middling at best. Did you see the Hedwig and the whatever the angry the witches? Inch. Not Hedwig the Angry Inch, the witches one that they did. Yeah, Hedwig the witch the witches and Hedwig Hedwig and the witches Hedwig and the uh, I don't even remember. I, I, even HBO Max wouldn't play it. They're just like, nope, this is the one movie we're not letting you watch for some reason. It's on something else. I think it was on Netflix for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's sad when one of your favorite creators is like getting tired because Neil Druckmann recently said in an interview that he is uh, he doesn't think he has many big games left in him. And he, I mean, it's he not could remake a few more. He could remake The Last of Us until I die, and I would buy every single one. But we'll the, probably they, get a Last they're gonna of do uh, the Last of Us remake. Uh, it'll be the first third of the first game. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's good. We They'll need extend the game it in out. They'll extend it. You'll be in calm for ten hours, dude. It's great. Oh, we need the game in bite-sized chunks like that. But, what? I mean, at least he's probably going to... Tyler, Tyler, you they, are a psychopath. They could sell you toilet paper with Joel's face on it, and you're like, I'll take 10. I'll pre-order it. And he's got a... He's got How like many a, ply is it? Doesn't matter. You'll buy. It, it's it's half ply, and you're still buying it, dude. It's actually sandpaper. He wouldn't it's even use it. He sandpaper. would just collect it. <laughs> He'd I, do it with wallpaper. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, I feel like slightly attacked, but I mean, it's probably true. No, it is true. It, we're, <laughs> we're razzing you because you just said something really psychotic. Like, I'll buy anything. They, I'll buy anything. You're like, well, a, you're like a pay well, pig. Sometimes for I mean, gotta lean into it. No, Last of Us, the show came out, and Tyler now has a fat head of uh, Pedro Pascal. Yeah, Pedro Pascal on his bedroom. Oh, the so, kiss marks. It's on, on that. the ceiling above his bed. It's really? Obern Martel, but he drew uh, Joel's costume on it <laughs> gave him more scruff yep. yeah yeah um and then i like i said before uh <laughs> i lost part of my notes it's fine i lost part of my notes uh i recovered most of them what is what happened was there an accident I, with some tornado or something uh, like, i used my work i lost my tornado notes. warning i yeah. have them in a word document or a google doc and i use my work email and since i'm no longer doing sales i no longer have a work email so I just ran through the articles that I could remember, and luckily I write it all down, so I remembered most of it. But Did you get your Last of Us fanfic off of the email before you lost it? Of course, yeah. Okay. I have that saved on like multiple hard drives. And um, then Tyler, the cool buff dude, before we get to in and I'll Joel's, help you, Ellie. When Joel met Tyler, part one. <laughs> <laughs> My new that, dad. <laughs> do, you think, do, you think, do you think Joel or Ellie would like you if you met them? Not Joel. Probably not. Uh, Ellie might. No. Joel would want nothing to do with you. No. Most people in normal life want nothing to do with me, so why would they be any different? <laughs> That's what I'm going on. Well, yeah, fair um, enough. In other news, the last thing, and you can look it up if you want. I couldn't find the article in time to properly surmise it, but you can play Doom on a lawnmower now. And I thought that was awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But console critters, I do have a little bit more. In sp- other unrelated news, man loses his foot lawn mowing while playing video games. <laughs> but he got the BFG. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound effect from Dune. I imagine someone just mowing the lawn, Dune. wearing the fucking Sorry. Apple Vision thing, <laughs> just going through it like <laughs> through a bush into the neighbor's yard. <laughs> Talk about a lawnmower man. <laughs> um, I'll. Uh, for Spartacus, I got some console critter Spartacus news. Um, yeah, it's Sony, your console critter theme here. Uh, s- do, 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 with the console do, critters, do, and we got do, the game do, news. Do, yeah, do, 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 do. Chat Xbox is best. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm Nintendo, and I'm here, too. <laughs> we got no news from Nintendo again. Switch we 2 have... coming soon. <laughs> Switch 2 coming soon. Princess Peach Showtime. You like it? Good. <laughs> we got nothing. <laughs> we got nothing. Nothing. <laughs> no controversy. Nothing. Well, there is a new Pokemon uh, digital card game coming out. Oh, I could talk about Pokemon, yeah. Okay. It wasn't there a big Pokemon showcase? There, It wasn't big. <laughs> It was, it was so – it actually made me – can I go first? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. It, I was so annoyed by this. Uh, so <laughs> out of the series of reveals, they revealed basically a mobile game application that is going to be the card game, which is cool. But um, it's going to be its own set. It's not going to be kind of cool like Magic the Gathering where I think you can – if you enter the serial code of what the card is, you get it in the game or something like that. Yeah, the, that sounds right. Something like that. So could you just get all serial codes online and just enter them? 
I don't know what the deal is, but I think it's its own proprietary thing. It's going to be its own like booster packs thing. But okay. the booster packs, I hear that you can open them up like every day and they're free. Yeah. But can however you, long but that's going to last, I'm not no really ba- sure. There's no battling though, right? There is battling, yeah. Okay. Which is fine. Um, I like that. I think that's interesting enough. I'm never going to do it. I just, I can't occupy my mind with more video games because I'm playing the new shit that's out that I actually want to play. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, um, there was a bunch of other shit. Uh, Pokemon Concierge is getting a season two, um, which was actually cool. It's kind of this stop motion animated. It's fine. It's amazing how much Nintendo news there isn't. I know. It's, oh, it's every in, month. It's insane. There's nothing there. If it's not a first party rumbling, yeah. it's a port to the switch that works horribly yes. from 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Or the switch to rumor mill. Well, it, what the the one thing they revealed uh, was Pokemon Legends ZA, which takes place in the Kalos region, which is Pokemon X and Y. Don't I can I can, I can feel your exhaustion just saying these words. Um, Don't. And it all takes place in <laughs> it all takes place in Lumwa City, uh, which is the main capital of that region. Um, <laughs> The trailer was barely a trailer, and it's basically announcing that it's going to be on – essentially, it said January – It says 2025, but if Arceus is any indicator, they're going to release it in January of next year, which means it's going to be on the Switch too. Yeah. Successfully. It will be. It just – there's no way that they don't release it this year. I heard a rumor that – They've already got all of the hardware very locked in, yeah. but they're stockpiling because they don't want scalpers to take advantage of yep. people. So they want to make sure they have all of the. They can't have another switch on their hands because the switch. I it took me three months to get it. Yeah. So, and I just got lucky one day. I went into a Toys R Us and I asked. I <laughs> panicked. I asked the worker there who was a forty-year-old man balding. Yes. I'm like, "Is it real? Is it there?" He's like, "Yeah, it's there." Welcome I'm to Boys like, R Us. I'm Bob. It's just like something went wrong in this guy's life, and here I am, like just reaffirming it for him. I don't know. But they can't have that again. They can't have that situation, especially with like the PS5. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wasn't able to get one for several years. Thank God I know a Tom. Tom had one. That's how I got mine. I got my well, hands Tom's on, insane. I got my hands on a couple, actually. I finally got mine like. Six months ago. I mean, I could have gotten it a little bit sooner, but yeah, they were they were missing. Yeah, they definitely need to do something about uh, scalpers moving forward. And I don't know how you combat <clears> that, <throat> but that's I'm not paid to come up with the answer to that question. I'm just limiting it. limiting buys to credit cards. It's pretty easy. Hey, video game um, developers, fix your shit. Fix it. <clears throat> I mean, if you're listening, fix it. Thanks they're for listening. listening. There are listening. people who just want your shit. And as consumers, the, the people who you want playing your games are the ones who are your average consumers, unfortunately. And it's, you know, they're, the people like us, they know we can be taken advantage of. But they took one look at us and they're like, we got these guys for sure, too. <laughs> well, I remember when I got the Wii, I got it day one. And for at least seven or eight months after, it was really hard to find a Wii. Mm-hmm. And so my basement became the place to hang out, which was cool. But, like, how many times do I have to fucking play Wii Tennis with you? You know, you get it yourself. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not a good game anyway, but, you know. Uh, otherwise, Pokemon, new Legends game. That's a good direction for the series. I liked Arceus. Fine. I just wish they fucking did more interesting shit. Nintendo, everyone. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little sour on Nintendo. He's not an infrendo today. Today he is the Switch bitch. I'm a, uh, I'm just a, you know, just, I'm, just a I'm grown gonna, ass I, man talking about Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, I've got to be honest with you. I'm kind of leaning more PlayStation these days. Yes. Speaking the of, 
This As somebody is, who only plays PlayStation, I prefer the Xbox. <laughs> uh, this is Spartacus here, and I got a little bit of news. Apparently, PlayStation is outselling uh, Xbox two to one, uh, according to a radical uh, an article. Fake news that I skimmed. Where'd you get this from? It. CNN, MSNBC. Um, yeah, go to Chad Social, bro. <laughs> Lamestream media. <laughs> Despite yeah. that, uh, PlayStation came out and announced <laughs> that there is not going to be any large first uh, first party releases in 2024. That they are kind of holding everything back for 2025 which makes sense if you look at the games that came out in the last few years Mm -hmm. you will not expect a god of war next year um final fantasy rebirth is is out now Mm -hmm. other than that there's no new last of us news on the horizon there's no (laughs) uncharted news on the horizon any of the top uh playstation games spider-man spider-man it just came out last year am i wrong to think that uncharted might be done it, it, it will not be done. They don't think rumored okay. that they can, they're I haven't gonna heard, bring it back. I mean, I obviously like you guys. I don't research no, the news very often, but I haven't heard anything about a new Uncharted. They should leave Uncharted alone, in my opinion, because they wrapped it up with a very nice bow, and I like it. Was it was great. Ended. Yeah, yeah, but they can also. But do, if they made another one, I would. They play can it. do temp, uh, Temple of Doom. Uh, what happened between two and three? What happened before one? Like well, there's yeah. enough. Uh, there's he did adventures outside of the four stories. Have we all beaten four? I don't want to spoil. Four. I've beaten four. I've it beaten ends it, pretty yeah. succinctly. Yeah. Uh, is he slightly sexist but pretty cool? I Nathan mean, Drake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You could do a whole nother series with Sam. Uh, that was the talk because Sam is voiced by uh, Troy Baker. Yeah. Who is fantastic? And who's that? Uh, he also does a character. I don't know if you've ever heard of him called Joel. From the Last of Us, is Troy Baker the voice of Joel? He also uh, yes. plays uh, who in? I thought God he played Big Daddy in God of War. He's uh, Balder. I thought he played Higgs Balder. <laughs> uh, but the theory with uh, the Uncharted Four series or the Uncharted series is that they were going to go with the daughter. Uh, they were going to wait for her to grow up and then reboot the oh, series with the gamers daughter. Gamers love okay. that. They love when you do that. But then there yeah. was backlash that people were like, it's just Tomb Raider because it's just essentially a Tomb Raider game at that point. And then... Because it's a woman? Yep. And then people were like, just because it's a woman doesn't make it a Tomb Raider game. It'd be an Uncharted game. Well, ev- everything I know about women is that they're completely one-dimensional and can't have different characteristics. I think... That's why I heard I've never met one. <laughs> I think... <laughs> it's- <laughs> What she she goes and explores? That's Tomb Raider. Come on. What she's <laughs> what she's funny too. What? Save it for the boys, dude. Dude, dude. She has quips when you're walking along a boring linear path. Uh, <laughs> PlayStation VR is getting PC support. Yeah, that's news. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, I like that a lot. Um, Could I, I plug it into my Steam Deck? I don't know. That'd be, I don't, inter- that'd be interesting. I don't really fuck with VR too much. I think the uh, the newest Oculus that just came out, I tried for a little bit, and uh, apparently as the technology gets better, and I don't know if it's the resolution, but I get really motion sick playing them. It's frame rate. Mm-hmm. And the, like right. when I played Squadrons. People have, uh, yeah, that fucks with your inner yeah. ear and your balance a lot. That made me sick. Yeah, some it's people tough. can't do that. Yeah. It was really fun watching you in that TIE fighter. I had a blast until I started going upside down, and then I was like, I'm going to lose my lunch. I can In only space, there play... is no upside down, Tyler. Oh. Dude, that's such a mindfuck, true. Sky, I can only play sky. stationary games. Anything. Stationary? Yeah. yeah. Anything. Like, I can... Uh, if it's... We, I've played, like, mini golf and VR where, like... Poker? Hmm. Yeah, hmm. poker. But yeah. mini golf specifically where, like, when you move, you look somewhere, and you click, and then you, like, transport there. I can't actually move to the next spot. It makes That's when I feel sick. Crazy. Yeah. But if I just like transport, I'm fine. So no. I, I think it's because the PSVR is underselling that they're starting to pivot to PC. Yeah. I think that's got to be it, right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, it has not been doing good since it came out. And I mean, they haven't really even announced any very big games. I think the biggest one in recent memory is Resident Evil 4 VR. Yeah. Mm. Outside if, of that, I can barely name a game that is like noteworthy for the PSVR. If you don't have the software, you're going to have no buy-ins. No one's just going to get it. Well, I mean, the PlayStation Portable or the the PlayStation Portal is selling well, so fuck me, I guess. But I've, I've been looking at it. I know, don't. same. I, I'm not going to get it as I talked. I'm not going to get it, but uh, I've heard from some people that did have it. They're like, it's nice if you want to sit there and have something else on the TV. That's cool, I, but like. I got a Steam Deck. I'm good. Yeah. Sorry, uh, man. I'm not going to get it, but I was like, I wouldn't mind having it. Send it to us. You could also, thing. people have been hacking sure. it or jailbreaking it so that you can play PSP games on it. And that's, that's been cool. 
kind of a big deal. And Do you then, still have to be connected to the internet? I don't think Can after you jailbreak, you jailbreak it, it, you would have to be. I would be fine if I uh, jailbroke it, and yeah, I'd be yeah, that'd be that'd be okay. And then there was one more piece of Spartacus news. Um, fuck, I'm surprised I remembered this much from memory. Wow. Uh, Final Fantasy oh, VII Rebirth came out. Uh, the, the PlayStation uh, Pro is eyeing to be launched directly before uh, Grand Theft Auto Six. Or somebody was looking at like that would make good sense. People were looking at like the physical breakdown and like the big announcements and stuff. The stuff that I don't look at, uh, but they noticed the correlation with it. Seems like the PlayStation Five Pro is going to be timed with the Grand Theft Auto Six launch, hmm. which means. I mean, we're Next a few year. years into this life cycle anyway, but I like yeah. that. I don't want to buy a new system. I don't want the PlayStation 6 yet. Six yet. So it looks like the lifespan of the PlayStation 5 is going to be extended just a little bit longer. Yeah, that makes sense. Which, I also, okay. you know, it, I think, I don't know, I just got the Slim model, which already boasts apparently some secret enhancements that they never tell anyone. But I don't know. I can't tell the difference. It's fine. Uh, Chad Xbox here. And hey, how are you doing? We just want to say, everyone at Chad's uh, Xbox quick, forums. Chad. Hold on, Chad, real quick. We disagree with everything Spartacus just said about everything. <laughs> Chad. He has no proof that they're selling numbers, uh, that they have games. It's all fake. Uh, Chad will lie. Let me ask Justin. Justin. I'm going to go ahead and game pass this guy. What, what shirt is Chad Xbox currently wearing at the moment? It looks like it's, it's says, a Mountain Dew um, Code red shirt with Master since, Chief wearing a thong since 1994. <laughs> it's a PlayStation shirt. It's a PlayStation yeah, shirt. It's uh, it's Dakota Johnson. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I'm da- I'm Dakota Johnson. I'm Madam Web. Thanks for stopping in, Dakota. <laughs> It's good to be here. Uh, Chad, X, Chad Xbox here. Uh, we do have to. Uh, we're going to be honest here, folks. We're it's a be, good impression. Have you seen the movie? It's not just like her. <laughs> Thank you. I got something you that I don't want to talk eyes about. Too. Okay. We do have beautiful eyes. Uh, yeah. Recently, you. Xbox had a business presentation. Yeah. Regarding the future of Xbox. And there are currently plans to bring at least four first-party Xbox games to other consoles. We need your money. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's not Starfield. It's not going to be Indiana Jones. It's not going to be the big ones. No. But uh, the the rumors are Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, and Pentiment are going to be moving over. Fair enough. And... I get it. I mean, if you already have the game complete and it's been out to your fan base for a long period of time and you want to make more money, and especially with something like Sea of Thieves, which is, you know, based on uh, multiplayer, multiplayer, Mm -hmm. online camaraderie, you need the base. If I was playing Suicide Squad and there's only 592 other people on there, I'd want to be on, I'd want to, you know, broaden my horizons. So have have you ever noticed that because uh, with like Sony, like, like PlayStation Studio, like anything they release on Steam, it's a massive sales increase almost immediately. Death Stranding, mm. uh, the Spider-Man remaster that completely like overtook the Steam charts for a long time. God of War, God of War, uh, Ragnarok's not out yet on it. But why not? Because there's going to be a surge of people who just don't have access to it who have wanted it for a long time and they're going to be horny for it so they're just going to dive right in yeah yeah it and makes sense to me i feel like uh, but they they're, they're keeping their big guns yeah close but I they're like you can you can have some of the smaller table scraps the xbox gods are laughing at me because they waited for me to finally get an xbox series s and then they're like we're gonna bring some games over to playstation nothing can touch game pass mm-hmm. game pass is great and they you might talk about it do you see that they just secret dropped dead island 2 on it yep out of nowhere. Downloaded that shit last night. It's, I haven't played it yet. It's crazy that uh, I, I look, you know, once a month at all of the news and, like, what is coming and what is leaving and when things are happening. And then Xbox will just, fuck you, here's Dead Island 2. Uh, <laughs> it's weird that they don't announce those things ahead of time as much. But uh, speaking of Game Pass, uh, added uh, this previous month, added back in February, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. 
which if you great haven't game. played it, it's a great game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead Island 2, Tales of Arise, Resident Evil 3, the remake, Persona 3 Reload, and Madden 2024. They added Persona 3? Yep. I can finally play Persona 3. Have you not played Persona 5? I've never played a Persona game at all, but Pers- you, Persona 3. Should you the- start with 3 or 5? Let's start with 3. You would start with 3. 3 came out in what year? Oh, so yeah, you like it because of My Chemical Romance. It's the My Chemical Romance mm. game. And oh. if you're doing the Tyler bingo at home, that means we have the blackout. He has mentioned everything that he knows. I have my interest. <laughs> yeah, but there's no Joel or Ellie in it. Gerard Way. You should get that on a street sign and put it up in your bedroom. Yeah, I'll put it right next to my fat head of Gerard Way and Pedro Pascal. <laughs> It'd be great. You take pictures of them like they're your friends. <laughs> The lipstick marks on it are a little strange. I can't take pictures because of the lipstick marks. They don't wash off, and I'm not that good at Photoshop yet. <laughs> You're just putting permanent marker on your lips. <laughs> uh, coming, coming, in, coming this month of March. Uh, we're getting Warhammer 40k bolt gun. I don't know what the fuck that is, but I it's, played it. Oh, is it's it, good. Is that now, that first person shooter that looks all blocky? Like Doom. Yeah, yeah that looks, looks really like fun. It's a first person shooter in Warhammer. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's basically Quake. I should say. It cool. looks like a lot of fun. It's it's a ton of fun. I enjoy it quite a bit. Lightyear Frontier. Don't know what that is. MLB The Show 2024. That is for some people in a big way. I'll play that a little bit. Tito Ortiz, right? That's a UFC fighter. Oh. Who's the Connor Ortiz? McGreg- Wait, Connor McGregor. Connor McGregor. Oh, shit. Who's He's the... Up the uh, bat. Who's the Ortiz? David Ortiz? David Ortiz. David I don't Batista. know. Batista. Are you mm-hmm. talking about mm-hmm. the, the Red Sox player? Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh Howard. The first no, game, Ortiz. The first game from Activision Blizzard since the acquisition is arriving on Game Pass. Diablo Four arrives uh, on Xbox, which Fuck. I would check out. Do I don't have, think I'm going to love it, but you'll you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy you'll enjoy one playthrough. If it had crossplay, I'd play with you. Yeah, I, I won't. So, I won't be touching it. Again. I'd like to play Baldur's Gate Three with somebody. That'd be cool. The fact that I, I never tra- the fact that we've never done it like uh, I would do that. Yeah, that could be a fun episode. I also have it on the Xbox though. Can it not go cross console? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Open Roads is another game coming in March. Uh, we mentioned the Xbox games coming to PS5. Uh, strong rumor is oh. that Xbox is releasing a white, all digital Xbox Series X. So same looking console, but it's all white, and it's going to be fifty to one hundred dollars cheaper since it's lacking <laughs> a disc drive with improved heatsink and an upgraded Nexus card. Isn't it already My all white? Does pretty well. Mine's white. Oh, it's got the black circle on top. No, the series no, X. The series you have a series. X. Oh, oh, you have okay. a series S. Yeah. yeah. How can you get confused with the title that clear? Xbox Series X. Yeah, their naming conventions don't confuse me at all. It's so obvious. I know. Spartacus Premium. You probably minus. don't even know what an Xbox Spartacan, One X is. Spartacus Premium Plus. It is. We don't use the quadratic formula in our names. Kind of we do. Uh, Game Pass hits 34 million subscribers, and that will remain Xbox and PC exclusive, uh, despite that we are now playing with other people. I got Game Pass to work on my Steam Deck. Well, it's because it's uh, PC. Yeah, but you're not, the client won't let you. You have to do some finagling. Did you, like, put a disguise on and just pretend it? I just followed a guide online. I snuck in. And... Microsoft Flight Simulator goes off world for the first time. What? Uh, free expansion was at, arrived uh, was added February thirteenth to celebrate the release of Dune Two. Oh yeah, Arrakis! In this Dune expansion, you'll take to the cockpit of the Royal Atreides Ornithopter across three tutorials, five time trials, and a daring rescue mission where aviators must save their flight instructor before a massive sandstorm engulfs them. I'm into this. That That actually sounds really cool. My uh, flight simulator should fuck around with this more. Yeah, Uh, it's dope. Yeah, the ornithopters. Do an avatar one device. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, Do all of it. Do the more you bring. Do the more franchises they bring into this, the more I'm interested in flight simulator. Flight simulator is fun. It's cool, but it's super technical, and I want a flight stick. If I'm going to play it, I want a flight stick. Listen, yeah. I've done train simulator games. Even that could be fun. Train simulators? Yeah. You shovel coal, coal and pull a lever? No, you're just pulling levers. You're going faster or slower based on That's uh, cool. bends and shit. It's actually kind of relaxing because they use actual environments. And yeah. It's cool. Um, imagine uh, taking off from Fort Worth, Texas, and you have to have emergency land in the Pacific o- or the Atlantic Ocean. Is this real? 
Are you referencing what something are you referencing? real? No, I'm just saying Flight Simulator. Like, I imagine just wanna, if they added that sort of that's aspect actually of the cool. game. Now, Emergency landing, Atlantic now Ocean. In, now, now there's included, an ocean rescue. Now included. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I, I like that they add stuff like that. You yeah. can get like a, one of those boats that, the air, a uh, plane boat thing that lands on water. Yeah. yeah. I don't it's know not going to help you on the ocean, really. Not in like land. deep water. You can land on the water as long as it's calm. Yeah, but in... Well, Dude, there's such a gnarly sequence on the water in Shogun, which I we'll see. talk about oh, I later. Just start, I just Shut started. up. Don't talk to me about it. I'm, I'm oh. waiting to watch it. Okay. Oh. Um, um, that's all I got for uh, Xbox News. Besides, uh, it was recently ranked by everybody important in the world that Xbox is better than PlayStation. Damn, that's uh, crazy. I missed that. That's actually what I heard, too. Um, and it, everyone ever, agrees Switch is cool and we like them. Yeah. yeah and everyone, I think we're all in agreement on that. Yeah, so. everyone likes the Switch. They're not the best, but they are the coolest. We got some games. Yeah. Uh, last yeah. bit of Spartacus <laughs> news I just remembered. Uh, the free games of the month uh, I was really pumped about. Uh, there's a Formula One racing game that I'm never going to play, but I'll download. Uh, how do you I, say it? S-I-F-U? Sifu? Sifu? Sifu. The fighting game? Yeah, yeah. That's free on PlayStation uh, yeah, for the Plus Premium good. Super Edition. Really? When did that come out? Uh, the March. Uh, it's the first Tuesday or Wednesday in March, so it should Shit. be up by now. I'll download that tonight. Um, I Hello that Neighbor 2, which I never played the first one, but I own it. Why and would we want to play that? It, it just has a picture of a mustache perv man on the cover. It's supposed to be super scary, Dylan. Is and it? And also, look at that mustache perv man right there. You can't say mustache perv man. He like, actually looks good in the mustache. So nah, you fine. look great, dude. Thank you. You look really cool. And then if the you last, were a perv, I would know, too. The last game is uh, Destiny 2 uh, expansion, Queen something. I, I, that's from the dome mm. too. I want. Nice. I, I will play Destiny two at some point probably, and I will message my old homies from Destiny one that I used to play with and be like, "Hey guys, we're getting the team back together." It's no, you're not. You're not doing that. I'd do it. Years. I'd wait till the end of Destiny two, and then I'd want to just do like a good fifty hour run and do all of the raids with them, so they could show me the content, and oh. then I could just get in and out. Because I'm so curious. I love Bungie despite the fact that they suck. I had fun with my time with Destiny. I just didn't have a core group of dudes that wanted to play you need a good team yeah uh yeah well we'll take a quick break mm -hmm. and then we'll be back to discuss what we've been playing and boy what have we been we're having a special beer that uh we went to amorphic yesterday carly and i and <laughs> This beer, fucking awesome. I had to buy a, a four-pack immediately. It's called Quadratic Explanation. Their names are part of their style. I get it. Uh, it's a warm fermented pale Czech lager rested on whole coffee beans. Coffee lager. Damn. Fucking great. Uh, big fan of this beer. I'm going to pour it now. Lovely. While, while we all get situated. But, uh, Yeah. So before we talk about FF7 Rebirth for what we've been playing, <laughs> let's get all of the other stuff out of our system. Okay. I we played will... Okami. I beat Okami. Nice. The more I think about it, the more I love it. Yeah. Uh, it sticks with you. I could listen to the soundtrack all day. Mm -hmm. Obsessed. It's one of those games where as soon as I was done with it, I wanted to experience it again. It oh, is, I recognize this game. It is a... Um, it, 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 I, I, I keep trying to tell people, you got to remember, this came out on the PlayStation 2. I didn't realize it was never on the GameCube. To me, it was a GameCube no. game. It was also released on the Wii, apparently. Yep, I have the Wii version that has the IGN silhouette in the background because they use... Do you, did you guys know that? I've done my research, so yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I have, I have that exact copy, and it has IGN in the background. It's it's like a it's not it's not it's like a uh, it's like a watermark. Oh, can you, hold on, let let me. Uh, you can't really see it on this one. That might be a, like uh, they might have photoshopped it out what or something. This? What is this? The it Okami. It's a game. Oh no, I was talking about the beer. Oh, it, uh, yes. Yeah, so this is the quadratic <laughs> explanation. Uh, <laughs> it is a pale Czech lager rested on whole coffee beans. Okay. How long of an experience was Okami? 25? 25, 25 to hours. Um, one of the most beautiful games That's I've good. ever played. It's gorgeous. The gameplay is sometimes lacking. The soundtrack and the design will they they can carry you forever. Wow. Uh, I mean, yeah, that 
That game is very special to me because um, because uh, the Bayonetta people made it. I mean, essentially, yeah. But it's also the best, one of the best Legend of Zelda games ever made. It is a Legend of Zelda game. We're doing Raw Dogs number ninety nine Okami, and we'll get into that then. Okay, but Fair uh, enough. that's what I've been playing outside of another game. Um, well, I will. I'll finish with the, the obvious one, but. I have been in a weird mood lately because I have played a lot of games. Um, I bought Avatar Pandora, uh, mm-hmm. the Pandora game. And Pretty good, right? It's good. It loses you, though. It, it does be- lose you. The Ubisoft Far Cry system just is not an enjoyable experience anymore. The world is a bit too large. Did you get past the first area? Yeah, I'm in like the second. The I'm planes. towards the end of the planes. But it's just like I have figured out the formula. It yeah. is rinse and repeat and... I'm just trying my damnedest to get through the story so that I can beat it. But uh, I took a back seat because uh, we did an Elden Dogs. So I wanted to play a From Software game or at least a Souls like. So Ooh. I am several hours into Lies of P. I think I'm in like the fifth or sixth area now, uh, which is apparently very Bloodborne esque. And the whole mm. game is pretty Bloodborne esque. I fucking love it. It's blood for, It's Bloodborne for babies. I love it. I played it. It's really kind how of far did you get? I got far enough to where I just couldn't do it anymore. I asked you a question. I got. <laughs> I beat. I beat the Is silly it two hours, ten hours, basically what? two hours. Okay, and you then I said, "I'm done." Because I, to, I don't know. I to, no, I didn't make it sometimes, to the chapel. Sometimes games take a while to open up. It shouldn't need to for a Souls like. A Souls like should punish you in ten minutes. I, but, I only downloaded it because it was on Game Pass, and same. I tried it out, and I said. I been I've been here, I've done it. It's and I just felt very just stifled. But don't you like Pinocchio and Timothy Chalamet? Oof. I think the lore of I'm the liking world, Timothy Chalamet more after Dune Part Two. I'll talk about that later. I think the lore and the art style and the tone that they set for Lies of P is a slam dunk. I think it's incredibly interesting. I like the dark twist on a fairy tale. Is a Pinocchio a fairy tale? A children's story? Mm-hmm. Um, I love Pinocchio. It was my favorite film growing up. I love that mythos. Really? Yep. Having played uh, as much Elden Ring as I have uh, for Did my you, first... Is there like a donkey boss where the, like you get to... Yeah. Like, Fuck, that's awesome. Uh, there's a, the first uh, stalker you fight is, the don- is a donkey. And I wear a German shepherd head. So I don't even see Timothy Chalamet's face. Hmm. Um, it's a pretty face. Lies of P is fantastic. If, had, if it looked like Danny enjoyable. DeVito, then I would never wear a head. But um, I have been playing the shit out of that. I abandoned Starfield after probably about twenty hours. You got longer. You were in there longer than I thought you would. Yep, I gave it the benefit of the doubt for a long time. You gave it the college try. That That's game fine. is, in my opinion, not finished nor <laughs> worthy of the time. No, it's not. And um, I played 80 hours, so don't feel bad. I think it's the worst Bethesda game that I, I may have ever played. Um, hmm. They have regressed in their game formula. Uh, their, well, it's the same. Well, I, just, I don't think they've regressed. Is, I think that they just have used I know, the same formula since I think Xbox it's re- is OG. I think it is a full-on regression because it is it, it, it improves upon nothing from Fallout 4. And in a lot of ways, it is worse uh, the resource yeah. hoarding, and j- it's a game about mm-hmm. managing your carry weight at 24-7. Yeah. The combat becomes a joke once you realize you can just become a sneaky archer again, which is every Bethesda game ever. Yeah. Um, it is it is a terrible waste of time, and I'm wow. never going to get those 20 hours back. I deleted it from my Xbox. Holy um, shit. I started a new uh, Elden Ring playthrough. Uh, okay. brand new game to slowly get back into Elden Ring in preparation for this summer with the DLC doing a blood build uh, dual wielding katanas which, very cool nice uh, idea I've leaned real hard on the shield and the staff the first time around so I'm trying to test myself and I beat Margit the other night so it's going very well I like how uh, with the trailer they revealed new weapon types and you immediately can find articles like Yes, these reverse hand swords, like where you hold them backwards, like historically they're accurate. They, they're not good, but they exist. Mm-hmm. Or they have like the new obscenely large katana or they have throwing daggers. They have a dueling shield, which is a new one. I like that. It's all based on some sort of real weaponry that's obscure and nobody really knows about too much. Well, th- those are like reverse blades. Like they were used mostly for like stealth. 
They're not super practical. No, they're not practical. I like also you can find YouTube videos of like a real uh, weapons expert judging all of the weapons in Elden Ring. He's like, all right, this guy's using an anchor. Uh, he's using it in a way that makes sense, but it's stupid. A candelabra <laughs> would not act that way. In fact, wax is not flexible. Yeah. It would it would not whip. The candles would not turn into whips. And then uh, there's one other game that I've been playing, but rather than me talk about it, I'm going to hand it off to my brother here because Whoa. he has also been playing it. Take yeah, it away, uh, man. Yeah. All right. Well, I have a couple games I've been playing, so maybe I'll hold that off. Yeah. Okay. Go Don't put it, words man. in his mouth. Well, I just figured we're both going to talk about one game. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you can chime in when I when I bring it up, for sure. Um, I've been playing four different games right now. Oh, my None God. None of them new at all. So, like, sorry to disappoint. Um, that doesn't disappoint nothing, us. That actually uh, excites us, new. I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we like old games. So the you biggest do. one... You don't? Uh, yeah, I do. Oh, well, oh, the biggest one is the one that me and my brother have been playing. I'll save it for last. Second biggest one, Resident Evil 2. Ooh, uh, it, was a free, it was a free PlayStation game. I like so that I you said that's not a it. new game. Like, remake's still pretty new. I mean, the no, remake's that was 2019, new. man. That's yeah. still pretty new in my that's mind. Five it's years decent. Ago. If it's last generation, it's not old to me yet. I mean, it looks okay. good. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Great game. Um, I went through my first playthrough with Leon... I'm going to go through again soon with Claire. Claire's Mr. is more interesting. Mr. Yeah, X, that's, that's what I've heard. Horrifying. Yeah. Oh, my God. The yeah. first time I encountered Mr. X. The I fucking. Was, yes. <laughs> just, you hear and those you're steps. Like, no, and you're like, no, oh, no, my no, God. No. I'm just sprinting through hallways. You're trying, trying to push a bookshelf yeah. over to one side. <laughs> I have, like, two bullets in my gun. I'm like, I can't. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm just running. And then you go into the save room and just start dancing because you can't come in there. Yeah. yeah. Damn it. So I've been playing a lot of that, and it's kind of sparking uh, a big uh, Resident Evil phase for me. So I uh -oh. are you going to play four I'm remake? Download three and four, and uh, nice. four is fantastic. Yeah, three is a little, uh, but if, you, yeah, I would I recommend mean, a YouTube video. Um, Boundary Break. Boundary Break. Okay. It's where they go outside of like the maps. Uh, it's really interesting because they break down how Mister X works. When you're not, he's nowhere near you. He's still programmed to be going through different rooms. Yeah. So he's always in the building. So you can just randomly encounter him. So it's random, but like he's always moving. And Dimitrescu works the same way in Village. It's not like he just shows up sometimes. Yeah. He actually is looking around and will get closer mm -hmm. and then find you. But it's interesting that he's programmed to always be somewhere. I look yeah, like that's that. That's super cool. He I just isn't like a spawn yeah. in. That's the most important part. So Dimitrescu is the same. Theoretically, you could clear a building without ever finding him, and then on another playthrough, run into him on accident. No, he well, walks too fast. Your chances of seeing him within the police station is extremely high. And he's scheduled a couple times. Yes, yeah. 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 I got to be there at 4 o'clock. <laughs> he's going to be have an appointment. He's going to be at the helicopter. So, yeah, I've got a um, – I'm definitely in a Resident Evil phase right now. Get um, it, dude. It's, it's a, a lot of phase. fun. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, outside of that – um. I played about two hours of Far Cry 6, and I don't know how you guys feel about Far Cry. Probably the same as I feel about Avatar. Never, Garbage. Never touched it. I like, I, I I like hate Far it. Cry. So Far Cry. <laughs> you so, hate it. Yeah, so Far Cry 3. It was uh, awesome Me and my brother played that quite a bit. Yep. Um, fantastic game. I actually really like Far Cry Primal. Mm -hmm. Any other that. Far it's Cry, good. I'm bored after 45 yeah. minutes. But it's, it's got Gus in it. Gus is the yeah, villain, see, dude. I just, I no, yeah. I agree with you. That yeah. game's not good. It's just not good. Yeah, I I gave it a shot. It was free, so I downloaded it. It's not great. Was um? Do you dislike the voice actor, or were you super no. psyched that they mm -hmm. have a a vocal protagonist again? Yeah, this no, I love the vocal protagonist, but it's just like it's it's such a recycled. Yep, um, it's a little old. Yeah, little stale. it's just every game mm -hmm. is the same. Yeah. Far Cry formula, story. baby. Yep, and like if it if it works for them, it works. Whatever, but just doesn't. I don't. I just don't jive with it. Yeah, cool. Respect. Um, yeah, and then um, third, uh, I'm still playing Celeste. <laughs> Fuck! I fucking yeah. love Celeste, man. I'm like, how far um, are you? 
So I've beaten the game a couple times. Well, now. what does that, that what does that really mean? Well, though? I guess. <laughs> I mean, oh, you beat A sides, B sides, C sides. I mean, Did beat, you play farewell? I beat every A side. I beat most B sides. Some okay. B sides feel impossible for me, dude. You'll get but, there. No, yeah. it's 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 a weird but thing where you reach a roadblock, yeah. and you you don't get past it, and you think it's impossible, and then eventually, I guarantee you're gonna pass it, yeah. and it'll be. First so, try next time. Right now, it's one of those games where, like, when I'm going to bed and I'm just I'm just laying in bed, I'll I'll pull out the switch and I'll just play it for like an hour. Which was interesting because we were on a road trip and you we you were playing Celeste and I was playing Celeste, but I didn't have it on the switch. And he claims it's easier on the switch. It is e- so I played the it PlayStation. on my on my 55 inch flat screen TV, and then I randomly played it once on my on the switch. So much easier. Like, the di- feel like, help, the difference feel like, is the controller. Yeah, the D-pad like, is actually really nice on the Switch. Yes. Uh, the PS5 is what no, you... No, I was playing it on my Switch, but just through my TV. Oh, you're talking about like Switch input versus lag. on the TV. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like Input you have, lag is not really something that would affect you less, but it's, it is different. So it was... I, I was dying a lot on the TV, and then I played it... Even in the car while I'm moving, yeah. I played it on my switch, and I just blew through the mission or through the through the levels. It might be because you're so much like what you're interpreting, like speed, basic speed of light shit, almost like yeah. what you're interpreting is more. It's more like tactful because you feel closer to the character. Yeah. And what what are, what controller are you using on the TV? Uh, just the the Joy-Cons. standard Joy Cons. Are you yeah, okay? Joy Cons, yeah. Interesting. But on yeah. the Switch, do you use the D-pad or do you use the analog? I use analog for Oh, everything. oh you're going to destroy yeah. your analogs. And also, ew. Also, yeah. gross, dude. That's just I, an analog. So, so like, I started so with is yeah. unplayable analog. Oh, I think it's no. unplayable See, analog, yeah. I, I've tried the D-pad, and I just, I'm so bad with it. <sighs> you're like it would baby. be something, I would have to dedicate so much time Man. to get good at the D-pad. Something you could change in the settings is... 360 degree dash control analog Uh so it's not just up right or upright it would have 90 degrees of dashing with the analog i don't Uh know if that would help you maybe uh it's it is a just fucking profoundly deep head game for me though i can't get precision on the analog to control stuff no and and especially with how bad yeah it's the opposite for me the analog is interesting the analogs break down so quick you're gonna you're gonna break your analog sticks Way quicker than you think. Well, Joy Cons aren't good for uh, no, long term no. analog. No. I feel it in my thumb too. Like after I no. play for hours, I'm like, I, I have an indentation in my thumb, and I'm like, this can't be good for my analog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a new Celeste game out. Is it? They shadow dropped it. And you have a. Well, no, it's not on Mac, right? You could play it. I could play it. Celeste 64. They made a Nintendo 64 Celeste game just like That's on great. the Lark. They made okay. it for like a week. Damn. And, okay. and it's all based on Celeste gameplay. But uh, it's 64 platformer. It looks great. It looks fun. But I can't play it. Well, what if, what if is it free? Yeah, yeah. It's like a free download to I'll celebrate it, the I'll anniversary. Bring it, I'll bring it next time. We should play it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll even bring my little uh, TV hookup for the. Yeah, that's cool. Number four. Well, last but not least for me, Helldivers two. It is, like I said earlier. Probably one of the funnest online games I've played in within the last five years. That's amazing. Yeah, I cannot. It is remember the so last time entertaining. I've had this much fun the, on an online. So game. the 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 thing that I love about it. So you guys play separate house houses. Yep. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it also couch co op or only only okay. no couch co op? But it's a cross platform. Yep. Cool. PC, Xbox, PlayStation. So the biggest thing for me is the amount of strategy that you can ep- implement with Helldivers 2 and the amount of communication it takes to like effectively play the game. Like you can't just I mean you could, it's just not as fun, but you can't just jump into it and wing it. Like you that have sounds to have like a my plan. nightmare. Well, Chad Xbox probably could, but most people could. I mean, if you're playing so <laughs> sounds it's like a, you. I I feel Thank like it's you. a nightmare. When you're playing with randoms, it is. If you're playing with That's friends, tough. brothers, Th- that's like a weird uh, it's, barrier of entry, though. Too is it if is. you don't have yeah, friends, like yeah. if, if it sucks not playing with people that you know, that's not. It's, 
hard to get into, but it's still well, people are thriving there. So. Tyler, you can chime in on this because I've only played with you or I've played solo. I, I've never played with strangers. So I had the game for almost a week before Justin got it, and nobody I knew was going to get it. I knew you two were waiting on Rebirth and had other games to play, so I'm like, so neither one of them are going to play it. I tried talking to Devin about getting it, and I, I couldn't. Might play, I'd play with if you guys got me in the crew with you. I'd oh, do you it. Can, it's can, so can, fun, can, dude. Can you get a nickname? Can you call Dylan like a nickname when you play with him? You're, you could, but that, so one of the best parts of the game is you name your ship. What would and you name your ship, Dylan? My ship would be called the um, Turd Burglar. <laughs> well, it gives might you might like, not be an option, <laughs> Justin. What is the name of your ship? All right, so I'm the SES founding father of family values. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like I, that with a mustache like that. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. I am the SES Lord of Audacity. That that's makes actually, sense too. That's rad, though. Yeah. Yeah, but you're rad. really not that audacious. I could be well in the you are, Divers universe. In the I fiction, in the fiction. world of hell diving, you should be SES Babelicious, maybe a bootylicious. No, no, you have a too much. You have a regular butt. SES junk in the. Trunk. I always thought I was dragging a wagon, dude. You got a, <laughs> dude. You got a, <laughs> you got a junkyard ass. It's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> hell divers too. It's a, it's a weird game because. I mean, like you said, like if you're playing with people you know, it's one of the funnest games I've ever played. If I was to play with randoms, it's not very fun. Nobody, I, I wouldn't be able to get into it. I would, I would, I would buy it if you guys let me in on your crew. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. It mostly it, most is, of the time, it's no, just make me and him Tyler. Do, make him do a test or something. Haze me, yeah. man. Yeah. Haze yeah. me, bro. You what do I got to do? Chug them out and do? <laughs> you got to stand outside of the house for five days with only one two liter of Mountain Dew. Yeah. I could I could actually do that. You but to, that's not a sign of being healthy. That's a sign of I'm mentally ill. This isn't about health. <laughs> the, for three days, you have to survive on a one liter of Mountain Dew and spicy chili. I, the one oh, liter chili, of, he's good could, on chili. The one liter Mountain Dew is dangerous because two liter is clearly not for one person. But one, one liter, one you liter. could argue yeah. that it's for one person, and it's way too much. Yeah, it's fine. I'll drink my own piss, not which is healthier than Mountain Dew. Dew. <laughs> um, <laughs> still got the same amount of yellow five in it. Yeah, <laughs> got him. Yeah. I think the biggest thing with Hell Divers too is the fact that, like Justin said, you have to communicate, you have to strategize. If you're going to make it through the harder levels, it is apparent that. We have a split with the way, like, his loadout versus my loadout. I'm more of a support guy, and he's more of the firepower guy. So if we need to clear a base with some artillery, he's your guy. If we need to defend a position, I'm your guy. So we have, like, a give and take and a good communication. Because he's, like, good at shooting, and you're just, like, a grenade launcher. 100%. Yeah, yeah his accuracy That's is way better than mine. very accurate, yeah. I usually end up with more kills because I have defense systems and grenades. Yeah. But mm. we found a way that we work well. We work good together, and, it, and we've been it, it able even, to roll with it. it. It comes down to the armor, the type of armor that you wear, because Speed. a lot of what you wear is heavier armor. I wear light armor, so I go out, I run ahead, and with I it. scout out the area, and I I go to... So there's, like, question marks throughout the map where you, uh, you can pick up certain items. Resources that, or yeah, guns resources. or money or whatever. And so if we are on a... Uh, a, a time crunch we have 10 minutes to finish this mission i'll run out 50 yards to the west and pick up this resource that we know is there because my armor is a lot lighter than his is and then Meanwhile, i'll meet back up with him while he's holding off yeah i'm at the enemies. back holding off enemies setting up support systems but i think the the cherry on top of everything when you have a good crew because we've played with four man teams and three man teams now where we're all communicating mm -hmm. and it's been fun it's mm -hmm. the cinematic moments that are not scripted and you just feel the pressure of the game like Fuck when you're yeah, man. when you're running from the automatons and the lasers are just clipping at your feet and you're diving dodging grenades and then one of us dies and you have to get the reinforcement out there like there's been several games i think there was one night we played six games in a row which is like Four it's hours worth solid, of gaming. Yeah, it's a solid amount. There, out of those six games, five times we ended where only one of us survived the mission. But we beat the mission because one of us made it home. And it was just through communication and like actually trying to win. Hmm. Yep. It is 
an incredible game and it leans so hard into the campy starship troopers yeah. aspect of it like the tutorial tip one day when we were dropping down on a planet was don't die or don't panic or friendly fire isn't very friendly <laughs> it is campy it's tongue-in-cheek it's exhilarating and i think i have i've got the hell divers bug i mean when we clean I when we finish that. here we're getting food, and that's my plan for the rest yeah. of the night. <laughs> you're gonna go get Vanguard, and then you're gonna go home and play Helldivers. Pretty much. Wow, yeah. he predicted it. Yeah. Wow. I know Melly's. Uh, Dylan, you've been playing probably 50 games. Not yeah. really. No. And so those, one of the one of the big ones before this yeah. one we're gonna talk about is I am three quarters of the way through Persona Three Reload. Three quarters? Yes. That's a lot. Yes, it is. That's probably, what, 60 hours? It's about 50. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I got really sick uh, the previous Tuesday, so not so like let's just say two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, I got sick on route, and I got the flu. And I, had, I actually had to go to, like, urgent care. There's a whole weird story there. Um, they forgot me in the waiting room, and I fell asleep <laughs> for two hours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh and i so i was home and i had uh i basically had a five-day weekend which didn't really feel like a it didn't feel like a vacation obviously because i was fucking dying and shivering like half the time yeah. yeah there's only been a few times where i've been so sick that i couldn't play video games but those are bad that was me last week I, I that the flu that's going around is it was worse than COVID for me. I and had I had COVID last week. Yeah, Jesus Christ, it was it was oh well, two weeks ago now. I so I'm I'm playing this game and um, <clears throat> I I downloaded it and I said, well, I I need something to strap in for. I need just need something that can occupy my brain while I'm like snotting into my own mustache and like it's dribbling down like more than usual. I'm gonna tell you, my mucus looked crazy. Uh, it was like black. <laughs> it, was it was blood. It was like our cape after the end of, end of a terminal. See there, yeah. You but yeah. um, I love I love Joker. So Persona Three, right? Yeah. Uh, I I will say this: this game is shorter than Five. Is it? Yes, it's much shorter. Um, you they four, they four actually, is your jam. Four is completely my shit. Four is my favorite golden Persona game. Golden specifically. Yeah. Um. And after this, I'll, I will probably play four again, but I'm also kind of like, well, they might remake that too, because this is so stylish. It, it's got the, uh, the graphical enhancements that are in persona five, but it's on three. And one of the things, one of the, some of the great things they did in this is they removed a stamina meter for dungeon crawling because in the first one you had to have a stamina bar and some of your friends would get too tired to keep going. So as you moved through this, basically one giant labyrinth that goes all the way up, it's uh, the, the Tartarus is what it's called. Okay. And uh, they've just streamlined everything, which actually makes the game a lot easier, unfortunately. Um, the game is not as hard, and I've actually found myself being too good at it, and I I feel like may, either I've become too good at the formula of what Persona is yeah. on its head, or this game is just easier. And I'm really kind of I'm trying to figure out what between the two I actually am at this point. You, you know what I mean, though. Like I've played, I played Persona three, then four, then five. So going back to it, is it just that I remembered shit, or is it that I actually am way way better? It's a weird. Uh, it's probably a little bit that you're better. Yeah. It's probably a little bit that you remember stuff, but. And I wonder. The story. Fucking way weirder. Good. It's also more simplistic. Good weird or bad weird. Uh, this one, you know how each per well maybe you don't know but each persona kind of has a theme. Yeah. On on Takamaki. It's like demons and stuff, right? On top. On, yeah. Yeah, Lady On. That's the, that's what you mean, right? No, like, uh, five is about, like, escaping the bonds of your reality. Uh, four is about seeing the truth in the reality around you. Three is literally, like... The Black Parade. It's basically the Black Parade. Hell yeah. You have evokers. They look like guns, fucking and you have to nuts, shoot. Fucking bro. Fuck yeah, dude. You have to yeah, fucking dude. check out you that right fucking... bicep. Oh, dude. Is that Joel? 
<laughs> it's dead Joel. <laughs> oh, it's the black. We're great looking at skeleton. Tyler's tattoo. <laughs> I know. Uh, That's for the listeners, not for you, Dylan. <laughs> I know. I know. Don't fucking tell me shit I already know. Don't tell me shit I already know. Uh, no, I, I think I think that Persona Three Reload is very good as a remake. Um, it has, I mean, the quality of life improvements on it on its own is just fantastic. Also, Morgana's not fucking telling me I can't go out at night every night. That's why you don't get a cat, dude. <sighs> Man, my cats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're constantly talking. But otherwise, I loved... I, dude, I, Goblin? Goblin? Ugh. <sighs> don't even get me started. He bitches and moans. He tells me to do the dishes. I don't want to. <laughs> Goblin is a very, very dark, like, like the blackest cat. Like he, last time I saw him, he was curled up in a ball and he looked like a void. Like I couldn't see his face. It looked like, uh, I see that whenever I look in Dylan's eyes. Yes. It's very similar. Yeah. There's a certain deadness to them. Yeah. But but also a spark back there too. It was like black. Like it would have made Batman very excited. No, Batman created the Suicide Squad. He did a good job too, I hear. Theoretically, there's probably a comic book out there that implies that. Oh, I don't know. I would say play it. It's free on Game Pass. Um, it's going to be really rough for people who are, have experienced Persona 5, like Brad over here. I don't think you're going to find as much fulfillment in it. I think the themes are a little more um, based I was, on I, existentialism. I was raised on PlayStation 1 RPGs. The yeah. jankiest of the jank. That's true. Uh so I know. I could survive. And if the themes stick out, that's all that really matters. The themes do stick out. Yeah. Uh, you have a dog that's a party member. His name is Koro Maru. That sounds great. Oh, yeah. And he has a little knife that he carries in his mouth. Oh, I've seen. I've seen that character. Yeah, I, I sent it uh, over the Discord. A GIF. Yeah. A GIF. Whatever. I think it's GIF. It is GIF. It is yeah. supposed to be, but I don't really care. I say GIF. Well, I the, prefer GIF. But the creator called it, it GIF. It is actually and GIF. If my parents named me Brad, my name is Brad. But it's one letter away from gift. Oh, I was going to tell that you. That is the you worst the rationalization I've ever heard. It's literally gift. GIF. You, you a, just don't say the T. That, then we're not going to talk about, what about spelling. Giraffe? What about and, giraffe? A giraffe is just a long neck boy. Tyler, you can but, shut but the hell up. Thank about. you. Yeah. Oh, my God. What kind of guys? peanut butter hey, do you eat? Did you just listen Jeff. to what? It was spelled with a J. Yeah, but that doesn't mean... Oh. Case settled. Jif can't what be else you been Oh, my God. Um, my man. I'm more tired than I thought. I only got six hours of sleep last night. And for some reason, it's because I drank last night. So I'm a little hungover. Okay. Uh, so we've also been playing something else. Yeah, and yeah. Brad and I have been the only one on the Discord talking about it. I think people are... Uh, Maybe letting not, themselves have their moment with it. They're probably not wanting to hear our thoughts as much. No. And to me, I'm just venting like it's my personal journal. It, I me am, too, yeah. If I'm playing the same game as the Discord, I actively avoid it until I get to a point where I feel comfortable sharing my thoughts. I want to talk about the first thing that I said on the Discord, and I didn't even want to say it out loud because then it would become true and it would be admitting something. But it's something I had said about the demo. And the graphics looked bad yes the game didn't look good in nibbleheim no and no not at all a lot of low resolutions a lot of weird textures the lighting was all over the place Mm -hmm. and the camera was horrible oh yeah oh yeah i had to slow the camera down a couple one or two because it just whips around you have control over the camera though right you do yeah but there's also the speed to where if you move it and it's like it was just whipping around. I had to go in and change the settings, but I was very worried. I was thinking it was going to be very bad yeah. and mm-hmm. unplayable. But uh, after uh, going a little bit through, after chapter one half is halfway through, uh, you sink into it and it's not as bad. Yeah. I'm on performance mode. My camera is slowed down and I am not noticing it as much. No. Uh, Cutscenes sometimes like, Man, Sephiroth's Some face. Sephiroth's face looks bad to me. Yeah, and uh, they're most like I'd say ninety percent of the time it looks pretty great, and it looks fine. But when it looks bad, it looks bad, and you don't expect that from a PlayStation Five game 
from Square Enix. I, I mean, at least I wasn't because I was, Seven Remake looked great. Wait, you're saying yes, absolutely. The, no, that's demo? something I can't even deny. No, we're talking about the like game, the actual game, the actual bad. game. Uh, it's it it's bad at points. Mm-hmm. It's very bad at some points. Yes, and it's mostly great. Uh, one of the things I was going to bring up is this game good looks great from the middle distance. Sometimes from far away, it so looks kind of janky. Like the further away Same, I am. Same, I agree with about myself. Really? But when you get up close, <laughs> there's a scene where Sephiroth is in the library underneath Shinra Mansion. If anyone's curious, see, incredibly mild spoiler warning. <laughs> It's so mild. No, this is this no this no but no but but like if if anyone's curious, we're not gonna spoil anything new, anything crazy. No, I'm not gonna spoil anything new. But like I just don't want anyone that's listening, don't be afraid. We're not gonna spoil anything. No, 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 no. no. Because this happens in Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, yeah. If you've played Final Fantasy Seven, you remember Nibelheim, and that is a part that most players wish they could skip anyway. Uh which because people have done it enough. It's all storytelling and it's kind of perfunctory. Like gameplay, waste, waste of time. It's a huge waste of time. It's, uh, goopy, it's gob, goopy goblin gamer brain. When there's a flashback and you have an hour and a half where your character isn't progressing, it feels incredibly tedious because every battle you do, every item you pick up yeah. is nothing, and you feel like you're wasting your time, especially if you already know the story and they don't change it. It's nice to see the Cloud and Tifa uh, disparity be thing, fleshed yeah. out a little yeah. bit more. Um, I, I do like everything that's happening story wise uh, with the game. The pacing is off. The pacing is completely off. It's yeah. fucking weird. It's um, very strange. All right. First, we're going to open with the Twilight Zone episode intro. An alternate reality. A very odd timing one. I, I even joked on the Discord. I said, this is like a J.J. Abrams mystery box. Can okay, we're going to have, wait, we're going to have a mystery box, a two hour flashback, yep. and then a 10 hour open world segment where there's no story at all. It is the weirdest it is, fucking pacing ever. It is a choice because I feel like they had to get that first part out of the way so they could give you what they actually wanted the game to be. They had to. But still, like the fact that they open up with no, like after the flashback, there's no story. For the next, if you're doing everything yeah. that you want to, which is what the game's about, it's the open world. It's about exploring and doing this. It is, it, it, it's confounding to open up a game this way. Can um, I ask a really dumb question? Yeah, go quick? for it. Is this a new game yes. or a remake? It is a sequel is, remake. Has this story been told before in another video? Not game? technically. Do you, have you played 7 Remake? Yeah. Then do you, you know. know. The, do you know the ending? Do you know the, you know the whispers? Do you remember the That's whispers? Eagle Park days. And those days had a lot. Of this is a this is technically a sequel, but uh, but it is I a re- question- it's a retelling. It's imagine if uh, two ca- if me and Dylan went back in the past and we knew everything that was going to happen to us. Like our our memories yeah. of our lives happened, and some things could subtly be changed. And eventually, uh, at the end of Seven Remake, they break out of the predetermined plan, so anything is now possible. But you're also the world is the, – the chess pieces are in the same spots. The different things can happen in the game, yeah. though. Okay. And, and, and different things do happen. Uh, as someone who's gotten past a certain point, I'm maybe two-fifths of the way done. I'm 10 hours in myself, but I still haven't gotten past the Midgar Zolum. Yeah. Uh, so everything I'm hearing by right the now way, is cold. No, fucking – it's just because we say the graphics aren't great. I'm still. I think it still looks beautiful at times. The uh, graphics aren't great. And the pacing's crazy. The the pacing can be crazy, and I can still be loving it. Okay, I think, that, I think the, it as a negative. The gameplay. I think that's a problem of open world games in general. The gameplay. Well, to be it, fair. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I'm Cassandra in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I'm yeah. finding my family, and then I spent 50 hours exploring islands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mom can wait. I will be there. <laughs> uh, it's it's just because the I mean the pacing. Anytime you have a big open world experience, yeah. if you want that, you're sacrificing pacing, and they also have to deliver certain story beats. Yeah, but uh, there 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 are beats, and one thing I will say is that a lot of our a lot of your expectations are not foiled they are subverted so things happen pretty much the same as seven you'd kind of expect what's weird is is that zach is all over the promotional material i'm two-fifths of the way through the game hair nor hide i was kind of expecting this game to be a bit 
It it said experience. It, what what's the what's the phrasing of it? Experience the unknown journey. Defy there, destiny together. Ex, the unknown journey. I think that was seven remake or no? Might have that's been this that's one. this one. Yeah, it's like all yeah. over the posters because they're trying to really emphasize this is not your grandfather's Final Fantasy VII Part Two. Like it is. It is. It's very different, and I really am enjoying it. But like, but the way they're telling this story couched in between um, extended gameplay sequences with Chadley and gathering intel and exploring yeah. the world. It, 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 it feels extremely disjointed. And one of the problems I had with Remake is that a lot of these story segments are extended a bit too far. But They're, you like it. I, I, are you talking about Remake or Rebirth now? Remake and Rebirth. Okay. I, I've been through the Mithril Mines, a part that happens in Final Fantasy VII. Go in this one goes on a bit too long because that's one of the smallest dungeons in Final Fantasy VII. It's a hallway. It's one hallway. It's a pretty quick little hallway. No, not here. No, well, sir. Well, that's fine. I understand fleshing okay. things out. That's okay. Yeah. Which also makes me realize how big this game is if it has the second part of that game, the whole middle portion. Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited on the game. I am very hot. It is. It's good. It's still a like a 10 out of 10 game for me. There can be faults and I can still be loving right. every moment I have with it. And yeah. after my initial uh, concerns disappeared, I am uh, ecstatic. I did want to mention if you have surround sound, it's bad. The audio mixing is bad. Yep. Audio mixing is bad in general. And I mean, I could also mention Baldur's Gate three. That game is pretty janky and kind of broken, but, but I would, it was still a 10 out of fucking 10. Uh, no, the audio, like every time you're walking through a city, there's, the dialogue from everybody in surround sound, it's mixed so they're all regular level. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, 30 people are yelling dialogue all around me in the room. It's like that scene out of Horse Almighty. Almighty where you can hear everybody's yeah, thoughts every before he starts email. emailing them. The, the prayers email. You yeah, reference yeah. everything from the mid aughts. I graduated 2011. Yeah. I, that's you when I graduated? Grew twice. You graduated twice. I have a college degree. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that. Um, I have a bachelor's degree. Queen's Blood is fun. I like Queen's Blood so far. I hate Queen's Blood. You don't like it. Uh, I'm just not interested. It's not the game I want to play. Okay. And unfortunately, now I'm on a fucking cruise ship where there's a tournament. So now I have to fucking give myself, like, basically the rundown so I can maybe win the tournament. Make but sure you use the hand. I've been collecting the cards. We don't want to talk too much. I, it's, I'm, the last thing I want to say... Uh, last thing I want to say, uh, combat, awesome. It's better. I, I'm loving the combat. It's, it's better. Uh, the characters, the way they all control differently, the way yep. you mix between them, jump around. Uh, it is my favorite action RPG combat setup I've ever experienced. It's Kingdom Hearts, but it works. It's Kingdom Hearts, but it was good. Yes. It's Kingdom Hearts if it was also Final Fantasy Twelve and not dumb. It's Kingdom Hearts with smaller shoes. The shoes I, are regular sized. I, I do have to say that the open world is actually compelling in this. It's cool. And it's not too big, but it's it and it's everything it seems like it's perfectly placed away from each other in terms of distance. The econ- and there's always something to do in between because you're always gaining experience. The economy is good. The economy is good. The level of item transmutation and yep. the collectibles, yes. it feels right. It is. Which balancing a game economy yep. is never done well. Uh, it's, 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 always, yeah. it's always disjointed. I'm either extremely yep. over, like, I love Dredge, but the Dredge no. economy, it was like, I half, halfway through the game, I had nothing to do because I, I already peaked on it. Um, I can't wait to play more Rebirth. I'm loving it. Yes, uh, it's not the prettiest Game sometimes. It's mostly very pretty, and they will probably hammer out some of it. You still walk into a, a rock, and it'll make a million jumps and sounds. Like, it's still janky th- the way that 7 Remake was, but uh, st- fucking can't be more excited right now. So I do have to say, as someone who's recently played Final Fantasy sixteen, which is made by the same developer, uh, different, different, you know, different sub-developers within it, obviously... I have to say that this game proves that Final Fantasy 16 is kind of a shallow experience. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 is all flash, no substance, which can be interesting and all fun at times. No sizzle. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, I, I think that this game is achieving something that 
16 absolutely tried to do but just couldn't. But do the, they say the F word? Yeah. Uh, Cloud says it, shit a lot the, in this. The, the, the characters are so uh, rich and understood. Yeah. You know who all of them are and – you enjoy hearing them. You know, like, kind of what to expect from Barrett, from Aerith, from Red 13. And uh, it's having a party that's so fun to be around and interesting. Uh, it's it's a revelation. Uh, it has, doesn't happen often yeah. in any game. Uh, Compa- but. Comparing it to 16 might be a little unfair, though, because these characters have they're, existed. They're both Final Fantasy. No, it, it no does, but these it, characters have existed for a long time. They've been fleshed out. You introduced new characters in no, a new story I mean, in 16. Mm, I mean, is it is it's, it really it's, comparable? It's, no, it, it absolutely is comparable. It is it is totally comparable I because Final Fantasy Weaver, characters so I don't, Final I don't Fantasy characters are known for their depth. Like hidden or like I fucking blown love Ellen DeGeneres in 10. I know you did. Yeah, he was so cool with his basketball shorts. Titus was a deep character, but that was a uh, growing pain of uh, the 3D era and voice acting. And they didn't even know how to direct voice actors. There was a lot of issues with that. Yeah. Have Uh, you uh, seen our talk show? Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. Anything else on on Rebirth from you, Dylan? (laughs) Um, I still have my concerns with this game, and I don't think for me it's a 10 out of 10. However, as someone who just recently replayed Remake... There's so much to love about this if they cut the chuff. And on, and the great thing about Rebirth is that the chuff actually kind of feels good in this. Like there are there are scenes, and I'm sure you've already gotten to this part, where a lot of these characters really haven't been outside in like nature before. And Cloud kind of knows what's up. And like you're walking by and someone will go, oh, no, is that something we have to fight? Yeah. And yeah. Cloud's like, no. And they're like, why? And he's like, well, it, it's in like the Shinra field manual, and they're not. There's there's wildlife, us. and then there's fiends. Yeah, and some are derived from Mako energy, and yeah, yep. And that's the world building that they're doing underneath to actually build stuff up. Some of the new characters they can fuck off. Kyrie is back. I just don't want to fucking talk to read her. read the prequel novella, Dylan. <laughs> She'll make a lot more sense. I don't care about Kyrie. Roche is back. Yes, my Roche. man. I beat Roche <laughs> recently, and it was very entertaining. Maybe one of the best songs on the soundtrack. I was excited to see Chadley. You weren't, but uh, I, I mean, like, we'll, we'll talk about a, it more. Episode one hundred and one of Raw Dogs will be FF Seven Rebirth. That is fine. Yep, that's yeah. the, like still three months out. Okay, then I might be Fair prepared. Enough. Are you going to play it? Yeah, but have I you wanted... played Final Fantasy Seven? Yeah, I think I beat it. I think so. I have that bad habit of not beating games. But, I'm talking about like the PlayStation. Uh I only played remake. I never played the okay. original. Because when I say Final Fantasy VII, I mean it's Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII remake. That's a sequel. <laughs> I am learning. <laughs> it's like The Last of Us Part Two, too. <laughs> Wait, The Last of Us Part One remastered, or yeah, The Last exactly. of Us Part Two remastered? I mean, part take one. Part I mean, it's it's all bullshit. So take your one. pick. All right, and that's a perfect segue into uh, our, our next topic. Perfect. Uh, remasters, remakes. We live in the world of them. Uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth has just dropped. It came out how many days ago, Dylan? Uh, three. And in four, to- four, four, sorry. Four days. And in today's day and age, we live in the era of the remake. Albeit, it could be movies or video games. They're everywhere. They're capitalizing on nostalgia. So I thought it would be fun to talk about some games that we would really enjoy a remake or a remaster. You can pick the category now, which ones we would enjoy. Now, now Tyler, we we've often talked, especially like when we're playing like new games that are remakes of things, how we distinctly don't quite know how the video game industry itself defines remake versus remaster. Yes, and I'm still fuzzy on it. So am I. So but I'm th- gonna... I thought that would be a good topic. Well, it's too. it's funny because FF7 remake isn't a remake. It's not. It's, it's a sequel, but it says remake in the title, which is the weirdest thing because it's it says remake, but it's less remake than every other remake. Yeah, exactly. So I guess for the purposes of this discussion, what I was thinking is I got that a good list. I'm excited. A remake. A remake would be from the ground up. You are yep. tearing the game apart and building it from bones all the way into a new game that is worthy of the next, the current generation. And a remaster would be polishing up a, the game 
as it was, making you maybe increasing the frame rate. Releasing or... Last of Us a few times. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. The remaster was fine. We didn't need a remake. I have a couple games on the list, and I figured we could just kind of go around the table. Let's and talk do round to... table. Yes. So yeah. I can start with the first game that came to mind, and it was the game that inspired this, was uh, The Warriors on the PlayStation 2, based oh. off of the 70s film. That's a good one. It that's is a, a beat em up too. game with a graffiti element that's a lot of fun. It was made by Rockstar Games, and I'm a big fan of the movie. I own it on Blu-ray. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I wish they would remake. Uh, they would remake this game from the ground sure. up, make a nice beat 'em up. Uh, give me co- couch co-op. Let me run through the world and try to escape all the different gangs after the dude who says, "Can you dig it?" Get shot. The only real beat 'em ups getting made that stand out to me anymore are Yakuza games. And like this- the beat 'em up is like and. It's stuck in the past genre a little bit. Yeah, so what could you do to this game to make it more interesting? And I look at uh, what God of War did with its linear narrative, like its nonstop one-shot storytelling, yeah. which is just the the Warriors. If you followed this gang from the park that they're at back to Long Island, you could tell that like God of War in mm-hmm. one continuous shot and just have us run through levels, give us couch co-op, Improve the graphics. Now, like the syst- the beat em up system is still there. That would be a very fun game today. But also, beat em up is not dead as a genre. We've got Streets of Rage four. No, we have but the- they're, 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 they're still retro games. Hmm. You know they what I mean? Fair enough. Anymore. But I mean, the Yakuza, like Yakuza Zero, that beat em up system is pretty dynamic. Yeah, especially when you get further into the game. So I think it's definitely possible. And I think, like, uh, like Josh. Josh loves the beat 'em up style video game. I do too. I, I'm form. just saying there's not enough. No, uh, there is. Yeah, no. was, I'd like. That's why I'd like. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think that's actually really good because that game was way better than it had any right to be. And if way you, better that that game could also fit into like uh, franchises that deserve more. Yeah, yeah. The Warriors was incredible. They built such a rich world in this tiny. The little... Warriors too, starring Jason Statham. Is that and real? Tim Allen? Let's go. Get out of here. Sylvester oh, oh, Stallone. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Tim Allen. Yeah, he, he does the, the radio voice yeah. for it. <laughs> Tim Allen's also? gang is the Tool Men. Yeah. The Tool Men. And they all go, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Tool, tool Men gang. Carrying adjustable wrenches and flannel shirts. <laughs> They've all got power drills. Hands and they're like, shit out of you. Uh, that, would be, that would be my first pick. I would like to see a Warriors remake. Ground up. Yeah. Give, me a, give me a polished Warriors game. Okay, I got one. SSX Tricky. Perfect. Oh, great. Love it. Uh, great GameCube game. The most replayable, fun, arcade yes. snowboarding game you'll ever play. One of the best selling GameCube games. I too. sunk so many hours into that, maximizing everything, customizing yeah. everything, unlocking everything. And one to one, keep all the systems, keep all the characters, just mm-hmm. fucking make it pretty, read like ground up. Hell yeah. Uh, SSX Tricky, I think, would be. And you don't. I don't want SSX seven. I don't want SSX four. I don't want SSX the true story behind the, the border. I want SSX tricky remake. That's that's perfect. I think that one's really good because that game absorbed a lot during like hangouts and basements, just like sitting there, and you would try to do like time trials and stuff like that, and you just love it. The most replayable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My turn. Yeah. Unless, yeah. Um, that's why we all looked at you at the same yeah. time. Yeah, I figured that's who, yeah. Okay. I actually don't want you to talk now. Um, <laughs> so I would say uh, my remake, I mean, I know you can still th- play this game on PS5. Oh. Um, however, I feel like a remake of Jack and Daxter. Hey. Um, would you want the a, entire series? That's not Would bad. you like a remake would, or would you just like a remaster? I'd love a up? I'd love a remake. You want the Jack and Daxter trilogy? Yes. Remake. Remade. remade. And I, I got something a little similar. So I like that. I think uh it's just I mean it was a game that you and I played on what what was it? Xbox probably. Uh PS2. Was it on? It would have been is PS2. it on Xbox? No, no. It was okay, Sony. it was just PS2 then. Yeah, and that's like um, those are the kind of games that studios could push out to like lesser known developers, and it's like the gameplay is baked in. Make the gameplay work. Yes, and just follow the roadmap. Yeah. Yes. Just make it pretty. Yes. Yeah. It is so. It's such an entertaining game. 
Um, just uh, I, it's so nostalgic at this point too. I feel like it would be very beneficial to to remake. Do you ever something do? Do you ever do to that? Jack X Combat Racing? No, I haven't actually. It's the fourth game in the series. Not a real fan then, really, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know that. No, I, no. I, I fell off after Jack Two. I, uh, I, I love Jack. One. Jack Three was the I'm last one. I'm gonna kill Vax. Well, as soon as Jack Two started, uh, Jack started talking, and it was like really dark emo. I was like, <laughs> I oh, I, I thought you were like a cool guy, and you're like a lame guy. Meanwhile, in yeah. Beaver Dam, I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. You remember Grand Theft Auto Three? Now it's Jack Theft Auto Three. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a real Beaver Dam thing. It was very Beaver Dam. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. I've got one, and it might be controversial. Uh, The Mass Effect trilogy needs an update to every part of that game. Yeah, because it's janky still to this day as fuck. Yeah. What makes a good remake is a perfect story with something that needs to be fixed. Yes. And that combat needs to be fixed. Two maybe did it best. In my opinion, two had the best powers it had the best abilities, like your like psionic abilities, like your bionic. What, what what do they call it in that? I think it's psionic. I think it is. Or yeah. bionic. It is. Fox it's, man. It's, 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 see, you know, I don't even remember half of it, but I do remember that the story Plasmids. was the reason I kept going. But if they made, if they drew it out a little bit more, a little bit more where you could just experiment more with the combat system in general, and you had a bit more going on, I might have been more in love with that series even then. And it, it deserves it because that first game had like the best story out of all three of them. It had the best lore. It was the best written. But then suddenly they drop off a little bit. And when I, when we were coming up, when we co- came up with this subject, one of the things that I was thinking of is what, what disappointed me about a game that I thought was generally pretty damn good that could have just used a little bit more oomph, a little bit of cayenne pepper, a little bit of spice to actually keep this thing, like, interesting. Yeah. A little bit of flavor. And, like, if I were to replay the original, you know, three games, I would want to do it with difficulty cranked down to baby, super dumb easy. Yeah. Because all I want to do is go and experience the story again. I'm not getting any fulfillment out of their fucking broken combat. No. Their weird planet no. exploration. It's fun driving the vehicle. The, the Mako. I actually like the Mako. It's fun driving the Mako, but it's also fun because it's kind of wonky. And they also yeah. introduced a bunch of Kinect uh, features with the, the 360 for three. Really? There was like you could say open door and the door would open rather than you hitting A. That's and stuff rad. like that. You could command Garrus to like go to cover, and you could. I think you used the reticle to aim, and then you said Garrus cover, and he would go. But with the functionality now of microphones, and especially the Dual Shock controller, you could capitalize on that tenfold. Yeah, and cleaning up the combat and making that a little smoother. I agree with you. That would be a fantastic idea. And and you could make it the same story. You could condense the trilogy a little bit. It doesn't have to be all three games remade. There's enough going on in the story where some of it can be left aside, unfortunately, but I wouldn't know how they would execute this. That's the biggest problem is this is kind of a wish list. So it's just like pie in the sky. But I think that that is such a relic of the late aughts, early 2010s in terms of gaming that I just don't think it works anymore. And that's the type of shit I like to see remade. I beat Mass Effect 3 in my uh, my college apartment. Which light would... did you choose? The green, the red, or the blue? Uh, I got the bad ending. I think I chose red. Oh, I, I always chose I red. I didn't even know I was choosing an ending when I walked yeah. into a light. That's how stupid the ending was explained and done. <laughs> Dude, I didn't even know. I thought I was like, uh, I walked, uh, and- I get you up here. And oh, cor- fine, man. correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's one of the first times in my life that I ever experienced a patch. Oh, I didn't know what a patch was where you could just change that first a ending game. is that first ending. That is was rough. I was wild. pissed. I um I had a I had a moment playing that game where I beat it. I remember picking my ex up from work and she's like, oh, what'd you do tonight? And I'm like. I beat Mass Effect 3, and she's like, oh, that's cool. Like, what happened? I'm like, 
Not a lot. <laughs> Disappointments what happened. It was actual like visceral disappointment because yeah. I was so horny for that series for a long time. And what a wet fart. They what they should do is remake Andromeda. Yeah, that'd be smart. Just make it good. I I don't even want to play in that same universe. There's not a bad story in Andromeda. There's no. a salvageable story. But sure. It's just bad gameplay. It's the gameplay is not great. But all of it is broken. Yeah. Uh, for my next uh, game, I would choose a remake. So from the ground up. And I don't know if anybody's ever played this, but I've brought it up on the podcast before. Justin, you might remember, there was a day that we were staying at Will's house and we went to family video and we rented a shit ton of video games when we were mm-hmm. sleeping over at Nolan's. Remember we got the game Obscure where you played as the teenagers in the high school and you could switch between the characters and it was a horror, horror survival game. Back before we, I mean, Resident Evil was out, but like it was probably one of the first ones we played. That sounds vaguely familiar. So it's a horror horror survivor game. Yeah, dude. He was also like six. So much weed, man. (laughs) Dude. Just super faded in elementary school. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Obscure is a survival horror video game centered around teenagers in a school that has like an outbreak. Um, I don't even know what this is. You can, it was one of the first games that. PS2 game. And it, and it got a sequel, so it was relatively financially successful, I guess. Uh, but you could switch between characters, and there was resource collecting. And it looks it, cool. It was a fun game, and I think. Oh, I recognize. Yeah, this. and I yeah. think with how well we do survival horror games yeah. now, with what Resident Evil has done for the genre and games mm-hmm. like uh, Outlast, nowadays a remake of this game would go over fantastically it's got a relatable story because we've all been in high school you can capitalize on the nostalgia there and i can't remember if it's like zombies or aliens or what it is but you're fighting an entity and you have to like collect resources and travel through the school quintessential uh horror stuff yeah so it's basically a four-player survival horror game where you can bounce between characters or in a perfect world, in this remake, you would be able to do couch co-op with your friend or an online playthrough with a friend where you play as one yeah. of the characters and I play as another. So I have to get friends, you're saying? Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but Obscure was you a game. This. I've always looked back on it fondly, and I would I would like to go back and revisit it. But if I was choosing remakes, that'd be towards the top of my list. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my next pick could be a lot of different things. But if we're in horror... We'll keep it in horror. Uh, It's a pop-in genre, right? I am proposing a remake of a remake. Hell yeah. Resident Evil 1. Like in the style of Resident Evil 4 remake? Well, Resident Evil 1 came out on the PlayStation, and then Resident Evil was remade for the GameCube. And the GameCube remake is amazing, but it's still tank controls. It's still... uh, Isometric camera? Yeah, the camera's fixed. Yeah. It's not. I mean, it's not isometric. It's like a oh, fixed yeah. camera. But I think they should remake Resident Evil One, a remake of the remake, yeah. and I'll do it in clap. do it in the vein of Resident Evil Two, Three, Four. Sure, it's there, and it's the yeah. starting uh, lore of all Resident Evil games. Mm-hmm. It's the most quintessential Resident Evil game. Haunted Mansion. You fucking you explore it. You wind up going underground. Mm-hmm. It's classic. The enemies are great. Little Lisa Trevor action. Uh, I love the whole Resident Evil series, and the fact that Resident Evil One is still trapped on the GameCube generation. Uh, you can play them still, but like tank controls are not hot anymore, and they're not acceptable anymore. Uh, they are not. And I want a remake of that remake. I want it. I agree. That's it, actually a good one. Yeah. It deserves the love. I can't remember. I mean, there's been very few times I was as scared as that opening cutscene or the first time you faced the dog. Jumping through the window. Like, that scared the piss out of me. And, and uh, I was a real little kid. And bonus points if they ever make Code Veronica. Uh, Resident Evil 5 will be the next remake, but Code Veronica is what they would do if they weren't... Uh, cowards. Cowards. Code Veronica has some weird-ass shit. Wait, was Wesker the... Or wait, was 5 the one that took place I, in Africa? I got the yes. novelization of Code Veronica right there. I used to have all those books, too. Yep. Yeah. And, I read all of them. Yeah, it's weird, man. There's twins. There's a lot of like, yep. It's the weirdest Resident Evil lore. Uh, but yeah, so just keep remaking Resident Evil games. Do I, all of them. I, 
Even do Resident Evil Zero. Remake that. I mean, that game was kind of bad to begin with, so... But it could be good. Give it a chance, yeah. It could be good if they did it right. It's a weird prequel, and you play an ex-con. It's so My strange. name's Billy, and I have tattoos and a mullet. This isn't a wife beater anymore. It's called an A-shirt. Oh, my God. That's that just true. reminded me of the Crow remake. <laughs> We're not going to talk about. We're that not going right to talk about it because I'm mad. But all right, what do you, what do you well, think, Justin, um, I believe this one was remastered within the last couple of years. But mm-hmm. I would love to see a remake of Sleeping Dogs. Ooh, Ooh, that's actually. I actually think that one holds up. Yeah, I played no, that. it does hold up. I I actually just played it. Uh, so I just got a PS5 within the last like four months. But about six months ago, I yeah. played Sleeping Dogs on PS4. It's great. I it's encountered a mission where there was a bug. I couldn't oh. get through it. Really? And it was Still? crucial to the story. Oh, no. So I spent $20 on Sleeping Dogs. Couldn't get through, like, probably two hours into the Which is funny because it's, like, free everywhere. I know. It was so disappointing. But <laughs> I would love to see a remake of it because it is such a fun game. And the combat is so much fun. It's just there's still a lot of bugs. Would you yeah. rather a remake no. of that or would you rather a sequel, though? I think, honestly, a remake because it's, I mean, it's been so long since I've played it. And just recently when I re-downloaded it, I couldn't finish the story because of the bug. Right. Um, I would love to just replay through the the story again. I replayed um, it like a year ago. And it, it does kind of hold up still, but it is kind of janky still. Yeah. Because it's like last year. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the the one mission that's crucial to the story, I literally, I, cu- I couldn't get through it. It's insane They're, they didn't yeah. patch that. Yeah, and apparently it was patched on um, PC. Oh. However, on PS4, you could not get through it. Um, <laughs> maybe well, if I, I mean, now that I have PS5, I might be able to play through it. But Maybe, I don't know. It's such a fun game, though. The combat is so it's, much It's fun. actually great. Yeah, I've never yeah. played it. The story it. is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. The story rules, yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm choosing one that is in the same vein as Brad. There has been a remake of it, and unfortunately, I don't think the remake improves upon that much. Uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Okay. It needs to be made new. It yeah. needs to. It needs to be a fresh little baby. It needs to have the same tone and everything about it, but with the modern Zelda art style, a little bit more control a little bit more going on, maybe extend it a little bit. I think that game I, I, deserves I would, I would want it like almost one-to-one gameplay, though. Kind of the way that the, well, the, the Halo the, games were remade. Now, hold on. But what I'm saying is, is they already did that on the 3DS. Yeah. They already did it. My problem is, is that it needs to be better. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not a huge Ocarina of Time fan. I love it, but it's also not my favorite of that era of Zelda. And I think that it deserves more. I just think that it deserves a little more touch, tenderness, and care. I'm afraid of Legend of Zelda remakes. Link's Awakening remake was disappointing to me. I loved it. It was fine. It was so much fun. It was fine because it was a faithful remake. I was in the bathroom. Did you say Majora's Mask? Ocarina of Time. Fuck. Um, but. It Which also had a remake. I still preferred the original Link's Awakening to the remade version. Well. It might be it might be the pixelation, it might be the charm, it might be nostalgia. There, I think if you do something new with it, though, I think you're all set to go. I think any 64 game is right. They should just remake the Nintendo 64. Just Banjo do, Kazooie, just yes. Nintendo 128, just fucking re, re, re-release all of the games on a new console. That Banjo Kazooie was the other one I had in my mind, even though I think that game is technically perfect for what it is. Yeah, man, they should. I. I think it would look great with a fresh coat of paint. Like, not even a coat of paint. Just build it from the ground up. Make it feel very similar. Because that's my problem, is a lot of the times when I was thinking about this, I'm like, what are the ga- what are the great games that I think are either A, unfinished, or B, don't hold up? Because otherwise, the game can just be the game, and you can keep, like, playing it no matter what. Yeah. Like, but, you know, I don't know. That's the they remade The Last of Us. 
That, that game is was fine. <laughs> it, it, it was a really great movie pretending to be a game. It was very good movie pretending um, to be a game. Television also, show. I'm was that? It was a television. Yeah, it, it, it's such a good television show, and it's like a really not great game. Arguably, the story in the show is way better written. <laughs> Okay, so the, Tyler, I'm going to have a fucking aneurysm. <laughs> the first game needed to be remade Wait, with no, current no, no, generation. No, no. Shut up, next, Brad. What's your next first game, but I will get to it. Hold on. Let's Oh, it's the rant first corner. game. Okay, had, man. The first game is great. It is dated. It came out in 2013. The remaster for the PlayStation 5 is fucking beautiful. Part two, however, cash grab that I soullessly grabbed because it was $10 so I could play the Rogue roguelike that's fine but put some fucking respect on naughty dog because those are two great games my next game <laughs> i love it when, i love it when employees like are forced to crunch what in a it? horribly unhealthy way to make money did for... you say cuber hey brad that doesn't affect me because when sarah mclaughlin comes on the commercials talking about dogs that need to be adopted i just skip the channel i don't have to see the guilt i just want them, i just hide my eyes i want it. them to remake the first game the first open world game go go all right. I want, I want to I be called see, Went. I need to see. I don't want to see a single polygon. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, man? My next game is not a remake. It is a remaster. I don't need a remake from the ground up. I just want a new. We can, coat that's of paint not, on that's, this not what, that's not. That's not. What My I game of the year is a DLC. <laughs> I don't want to remake. Hey, I'm trying to trailblaze out here. No, no, I'm well, trying to push so the let's, boundaries. Let's hear it. I okay, so what game do you want to have be your, the next remake? Because that's what we're doing. Oh no, no, it's re- you were in there. I said remake, remaster. There's a difference. There's a difference between the two. The art's already made so, for the thumbnail. We can't I want, change this. But it's re it's remake. <laughs> I just want and get your bingo cards out because he's gonna say the thing. Evil Dead Fistful Fistful of Boomstick on the Xbox was a fantastic good. 3D game. I loved it. Update right. the graphics a little bit. Don't give me a full remake. Is that just, the one with the little like a uh, zombie companion guy? Yeah, and then, like you can. You know, Sam Raimi's brother voiced that character. No shit, really. Yeah. Uh, I remember having so much fun with this game because it was super campy. Yeah. Uh, it had some really good boss battles. I don't really remember the story, so honestly, it'd be a perfect. It's a uh, sequel remaster. Uh, yeah, because there is. Evil Dead. No, so it's, it's it's the first of the two because it's Evil Dead. Fist no, no, it's stick. a sequel to the Evil Dead movies. Oh, yeah, they did make another Evil Dead game that I, I don't remember playing. But Fistful of Boomstick. Check was out the a previous Dogcast. We talked about them. You, you weren't what? there. I wasn't there. <laughs> no. It's true. Um, yeah, no, that would be my next <laughs> pick. Uh, that was a really fun game that I sunk a lot of hours in at my buddy Max's house. We beat the shit out of the game through and through, and I don't really remember it all that well, so it could probably. I'd like to play it again. Now, I, I think that I'm in a similar boat to you uh, with my next choice because a remaster would suffice, but I would prefer a remake with some tweaks. Uh, Bioshock 1. Yes. Ooh. Actually, yes. Uh, Bioshock for the 360. What a, what a, an amazing game. Genre-defining. I, I don't know if I went back, if I would appreciate <clears throat> the gameplay as much. Ken Levine. It's still good. Ken, I, I, I played it last year. It is good. Ken Levine's gameplay is stagnant. It was good in Bioshock 1, but then it like... Uh, yeah. And we've seen that he hasn't done anything new for a little while, but uh, I would just prefer... you know made a game in like 10 years. Everything uh, ground up, redone for that game. Uh, same soundtrack, same story, sure. but... You get your wish. Judas comes out so... <laughs> Yeah, we'll get we'll get the exact same I'm game. So again. I'm so excited. No, I agree. Judas. That'd be a good one. No, I I love Bioshock so much, and I think a a, new, a polish, a new version of that game. It could be a there remaster was a, there was or a remake. Re- there already was a remaster. What's I mean, there? I don't call when it. Or, the Bioshock collection is when, completely. Is a remaster. that remastered? Yes, it's a remaster. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know. It I, is a graphical upgrade. It's technically. I a want remaster. the how, I want the gameplay. How updated. long ago did that come out? 2016, the original Bioshock came out in 20, 2007. So, yeah. So, wow. so I mean, even even so also, they should re- the wow, Yeah, you rattled them off quick. Yeah. <laughs> they, should remake, they should remake Bioshock Infinite and make the gameplay good. Yes. Yeah. That, that one's really good for remaking because I think the story is uh, good. It's serviceable. It's fine. It's pretty good. 
Uh, the game, more, give me more to do. The gameplay sucks in Bioshock Infinite. I two really weapons, enjoyed it. The skyhook, the two, two weapons. weapons. Well, no. I think what really won me over was... Let's go eat 30 hot dogs out of the garbage while we're <laughs> skyhooking around and pretending to fight. I liked the fact that it was one of the first games that showed uh, the kind of seamless... Uh, conversation between your character and an npc Kinda. where you just like wasn't... elizabeth because she throws stuff to you and she doesn't get in the way is what and you're she's saying. cute i did have i do like elizabeth she's like fantastic it. but no that game had a way of like initiating... you know who's really hot comstock they, <laughs> they <laughs> initiated dialogue in a really unique way that i had never seen done before in a game you would it seemed seamless and at the time it felt so natural it almost felt human Whereas in other games, you have to get to this point on the map or this doorway or this landmark in order to initiate the com- the conversation. Whereas in this one, it felt like it was completely random and it felt very fluid. But it was also very scripted. I, I don't understand it was, really what you're talking about. But no, I think it was, just his first, it was his first time experiencing something that was oh, well, okay. well designed. Right. Yes. Yeah. And it yeah. was... I was very high on that game when that it came out. That came out in 2013, the same year as The Last of Us. I mean, uh, you go back to fucking... You, you go back to... No, that you came go, out in 2011. You go back to... College. No, you go back to like... It came out in 2013, brother. Oh, I know it. Man. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. Tyler, you go back to Final Baby Fantasy. Doll, I've got... I've got memories for days. We'll find out the truth. Moving on. Tyler, 2013 <laughs> it is. No, uh, but it was announced in 2011. <laughs> but you go back to Final Fantasy IV and you have great dialogue cues when someone walks in a room and a character starts talking to you. But uh, like- Dialogue cues that are smart and uh, See, Brad, apropos you- to the gameplay has existed for a long time. But you're forgetting the one thing about Tyler. It Let's made for on Tyler. more of a cinematic experience, which okay. you could have a goddamn terrible fucking game. And if you make it even the slightly, just slightly cinematic, I'm going to get the biggest boner over it. Yeah, and I don't we've, get it. We've Did you guys about- know that uh, Booker DeWitt is voiced by Joel from The Last of Us? It's true. No he also plays the guitar. Way. In yeah. He, has, he also voices the bastard in who's, Diablo 3. Whose turn is it? I think it's my turn. It's yeah, you turn. said Bioshock. Yeah, yeah, Justin. Bioshock. Um, <laughs> I have something. Uh, I'm not trying gonna, to make fun gonna of you. S- switch it up a little bit for you guys. Um, Is that a clue? I think that Rock Band should be remade. It already I mean, is, buddy. I mean, no. It's but, already being remade. No, he, he Dude, pitched, you play it every night on stage. You are the remake. I nope. know, I know. But but we've talked about this before. We need uh, so okay. So we have rock band more plastic shit <laughs> where it's at now. No, I, I see what you're getting. At, I know. I get. I get it. Yeah. Rock band is such a. <laughs> I mean, it's such a popular game. Obviously, the. I mean, you look at uh, the drum sets now. They're worth a lot of money now. They're worth a they lot are worth of quite money a bit if they're in working order. Rock band. I don't know who makes rock band. But they could it wasn't make harmonics. harmonics. They it was, no, harmonics. was it harmonics? Harmonics. Yeah, I harmonics. It was harmonics. Yeah. They, they could made Guitar make Hero. So much money Ooh. if they were no, to just right. remake another rock band. Make it more modern. Whatever they want to fucking what, do. What they but, need to do is make it to where any electronic instrument can be plugged in. Yes. Yes. Oh, they, I mean, it, you look at Rocksmith. It's, Rocksmith I mean, similar that. to that. You could use a Rocksmith real Rocksmith is instrument. cool. I, pl- I fiddled around with that. It's since, kind of interesting. Since Microsoft, That's how I'm playing bass guitar right now. Microsoft yeah. now owns the, the rights to Guitar Hero, and they have said that they, they've talked about bringing Guitar Hero back in oh, in some way. And I mean, back Guitar off. Hero Rock Band, it's so popular. However, it's it's not being made now. You know, so you know like, what... Uh, and like. It's hard to get your hands on it. Yeah. It's such a fucking pay to play model. Yeah. You want this band song. Yeah. Yes. Two bucks. And anyone who likes, you know, let's just spitball my chemical romance. Yeah. Like, if that came out, you'd probably buy all the songs. I did. Again. Would you do it again? I did on Rocksmith. He would you would. do it? Would you do he it would. again? Yes. One hundred percent. It's okay. my favorite band, and to be able to—I mean, I don't know—virtually cosplay as my typical romance. That's what the game is. It's a—it's a weird uh, game to bring up because it, I mean, it's just so like. I was thinking to about piggyback no. off your rock band idea. I always thought it would be cool to do that and incorporate VR with it, where you can look down, like have the track in front of you, 
but you could look down, see what you're playing, also look up, see the crowd, and play online and be able to look at if you're I mean, playing VR drums. VR would be nuts. That's yeah. how you bring the game to the next generation. I'm going different with this. Dance I, Dance Revolution. Make a fucking another, like, a, a dance pad for home. Do you remember those dance pad controllers people had at their houses? Yeah. We I had them it. in gym class in eighth grade. Yeah. I think if they were to make a really good, like, just DDR, the collection. Did I ever tell you I got the Mario version? That's horrible. And it's great. I, uh, no, it's not. It, it's, it, it no, wasn't good. Well, it's just like Donkey Konga was the worst version of a rhythm game. I can't my imagine mom, that the Switch version of DDR was better. My mom walked in because she's like, what's all that stomping? She walks into my room <laughs> and, and I'm sweating. And Mario's doing the Macarena. <laughs> like, she understood. Pretty much. And I felt so embarrassed. It's like she caught me masturbating. <laughs> Except worse. <laughs> it was worse. If she, caught me, if she caught me, if she caught me, if she caught me jerking off, it would have, it wouldn't have been that much of a problem compared to this. She looked at me in a way that I, I can't, for, I can't fucking forget about it. She's like, oh my god, like my mom was cool in high school. I, I was not. <laughs> I just, I just, I just the, the look on her face, it wasn't even like disappointment. It was somewhere between like resignation, like apathy, <laughs> resignation, and also just like it was as if she was questioning giving birth to me. <laughs> and I'm sweating. It's like, I'm like, it's oh, like Jeffrey Dahmer's oh, parents oh. finding his jar of dead animals. They're like, what? No, his dad liked it. His dad is a his dad was a chemist. Killer. Yeah. I'm pretty sure his dad was a serial killer as well. His dad was at least uh, speculation. Uh, Strike it from the record. Fair enough. <laughs> Hair of the dog. <laughs> Edgar killed his leaves. brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I agree. The rhythm game genre needs a bit of a, a boost. Yeah, for and sure. Especially with like physical kinetic toys that you can play with. Yeah, toys, controllers. I think that's actually like. That's a bomb idea. I, I'd like to go back and to like, something like that. Could you Maybe imagine, I'd be more interested. Could I mean, you imagine a year or two from now, Rock Band comes out with a new Rock Band? How well, if big they that would did, be? If they did, they would have to add the horn section. They need a new instrument. They have to. Yeah. They, if, they, they, if they're doing Rock Band... They've already done a, guitar and DJ. They need a new instrument, I and they need argue, it to be a trumpet or saxophone. I would argue it's... Probably and keep long it. enough. I inherited that a you don't from my need to add anything. Well, I, I mean, feel if like, you want to, I feel do, like if you could, lazy, but I say you, add something. If you want to be, yeah, I mean, I would love for them to add, but add something. But I feel like it's been long enough. You could release almost the same exact game, mm. and people would buy it. That's the dream. I mean, you yeah. supply it, people will buy it. Look at how many people are trying to buy a drum set. For a rock true. band, yeah. It's I mean, enough. I'm hungry for one. Yeah. I still, play I would it. love to have. One. I had Matt over at the house last week, and we got I would, really drunk. And I would, rock lo- band. It was I would love for the developers and whatever to. I have, uh, I have an to, electronic drum set I'm not using. Really? Would you want to buy it from me? I wouldn't buy it, but Dylan, you take it. <laughs> I would take it. <laughs> Dylan, what's your no. next game? So actually someone on the Discord brought this one up and it was something I had on my list. So I'm not copying. I'm not a copycat. Copying is cool though. The Discord's great. Well, they they're also correct. Uh your brother Brian, I believe, brought this one up. Uh it was Xenogears. Xenogears is a famously unfinished video game. The second disc is mostly a visual novel and it It's very weird. It's not okay. <laughs> Considering what the rest of the game is. Yeah. It's it, a beautiful game. It's a wonderful... It transcends the PlayStation 1 yes, with it its does. art style, which is not easy yeah. to do. Uh, and anime cutscenes all the way through. Uh, everything is so stylized. A completely unique battle system. Remake it. Because that story's worth doing. Xenoblade Chronicles is so popular right now. It's it's heavy. I, I forget Xenoblade Chronicles is the same universe as Xenogears. It's not the same universe. It isn't. No. Same franchise? Same franchise, yeah. With like you're squinting your eyes at it and pretending. Um it, it's it's uh, different mythologies. It's like a Final Fantasy. When somebody when they made like uh 
Well, the big twist of the big twist of three. Spoiler alert for everyone is that Xenoblade Chronicles one and two are technically parallel universes, and they merge. Sometimes you say spoiler warning, and my brain doesn't comprehend a word you say afterwards, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's fine because you guys aren't going to fucking play it anyway. It's fine. I want to play it at some point, but I would start with one. The remake of that is actually quite good. I think Xeno Gear should be remade. Xeno Gears deserves it. Um, it's all a bunch of talking in the second disc. Part of it, there's some gameplay, but suddenly they explain the rest of the plot. There's someone in a room and they're explaining the rest of the plot and. The pure boner killer of that is just too much. Yeah. How can you release a game in that state? Uh, also, I think think any other PlayStation 1 RPG, I know uh, the Discord mentioned Legend of Dragoon as well. Yeah. That, that story sucks balls, though. I just But I I, I, pretty much any PlayStation 1 game. Uh, Vagrant Story, that'd be a good one. Vagrant remake. Story would be a good remake. Legend of La Gaia. Fuck it, just anything. Legend of La Gaia. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, no, I would take that. Yeah. The only other two, and I'll just throw them out there real quick. Can I, I, don't can have I to guess? Talk. Yeah, go for it. Um, you Elmo, might be able to get one of them. I doubt you get the other one. Elmo's Puzzle Adventure. God damn it. He got the one I didn't think he'd get. <laughs> damn. No, oh, you're wrong. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, Where's Big Bird? Number one uh, would be Morrowind. I would like a remake of Morrowind because okay. I never got to play it. It was too dated by the time I got to it, and I just I wish I could play that and enjoy it, but it's just too too old. Okay, I, I can't get over it. That's fair. And enough. then the the last one I'll bring up is uh, the Suffering. It was a oh, like yeah. horror horror third person shooter with like in a prison with like people being tested on they made two of them the second one kind of sucked but the first one was great first game i ever played in surround sound and you can hear the knives on the dude's feet when he runs up the wall behind you first time i ever experienced that scared the piss out of me honestly that game uh it got a lot of guff at the time too it was was one of those ones that congress was going after yeah they did not like it it was very gory uh fantastic game though i had a lot of fun playing that one I'll run through uh, some of the remainders. Uh, Bloodborne, naturally. Yep, I figured they'd be on your list. It should. I didn't even need it, like, want to say it, but if I didn't, it would be weird. That's going to be the thumbnail, probably. Eternal Darkness. That Ooh. needs... Oh, my God, that yeah, needs... Yeah, that's it. a good one. That's a game that I never played, and a game wanna- that... It's a game that I've heard, if you didn't play it originally, it won't really work for you. Uh, because it's meant to fuck with you based off of CRT televisions. And... It's also just like a little bit more of its time, so the nostalgia doesn't work really if you didn't sure. play it. I, I played it in college. I didn't get it. A, Eternal Darkness. Remake that. Uh, God of War 1. OG. Make it in the vein of the new stuff. That could be fun. Uh, the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy. Smart. Yeah. Uh, they You're are just horny for Kitty Kong. I think Baby Kong. Kitty Kong? Is it Kitty Kong? It's Kitty Kong. Kitty, Kitty Kong. No, Kitty Kong. No, it's Baby Kong. Because Kitty Kong is from 64. Either way, Kong, Diddy Kong, Baby uh, Kong, I love all those games. And a nice fresh coat of polish would be nice on that. And uh, stay with me here, folks. Uh, Final Fantasy VII should get remade. Hmm? But for real this time. Nice. Just like the same combat. You could even reuse every all of the assets from this. Just stick the regular combat and f- stick to the old story. Turn-based? That is psychotic. It's Brad, not, we don't have a remake yet of Final Fantasy VII, and I wouldn't mind a remake that's not what, of it. That's not what the title says. I know, but it also is a sequel. It is technically a sequel. I, I mean, I'm just saying I wouldn't mind the original gameplay and story done uh, with the modern assets, which they have made, and it would be a layup. And mostly I thought it would be a funny, uh, ironic thing to say in this episode. <laughs> are you are you excited for when we talk about which Sephiroth from which game is? actually appears at certain points within the this, game itself. This were, Sephiroth, I'm, no, this Sephiroth is a future continuation of the old one. It's the same Sephiroth. I know. It's a, but it's further down the timeline. It's, it's Advent Children Sephiroth. It's Kadash, Yaz, and Lazu. Don't this dil- is riveting. Dilly dally, shilly shally, motherfucker. Dude, dilly dally, shilly shally. Justin, any, uh, any last ones you want to throw in the ring? You know... I don't think so. I think really, you think you've tapped out. Um, what did I mention? 
Uh, Hentai Queens I, 5. I'm trying to think of uh-huh. games that I played all the time when I was like on Xbox 360. Um, yeah. One of them that comes to mind is uh, Army of Two. Yeah, um, that's a good one. That was a fun game. That's just um, us and Helldivers now. Yeah, I really, honestly, I didn't want to bring it up because I don't remember a whole lot of it when I first played it. Imagine you can be dragging your player who's hurt and he's still shooting exactly. at the enemy. Yes, exactly. That's the. I remember reading the articles on fucking that. Xbox Magazine and they're like, yeah. And Whoa. the way they described co-op gameplay blew my mind. I never played it, but I heard yeah. I heard it was very cool. I mean, so there's a lot of co-op gameplays like um a way out. Um Well, Brad I mean, and I don't have friends, so don't rub it in. That's fairly new. I hate We that. don't even call um, each other friends. I was going to no. say I hate it would make us like you, but you guys are friends. Yeah. <laughs> it would make us uncomfortable. So, there's a lot of it's like we kissed or those something. games. I don't have friends. <laughs> I've never even kissed anyone. It never there's happened. A, there's a lot of those games that I like, but I didn't want to necessarily mention them um, because I don't know how well they would be received as a, a remake or a remaster, mm-hmm. but they'd be fun. True. I would play them. If they were remade, I would play them. Like so, Jet Moto? Yeah. Yeah. Jet Moto would be all we right. played the Let shit out of Jet Moto as yeah. a kid. I'd take a remake of that. I have one left. The last one. Bring us home, Dylan. It is a game you guys have probably never fucking heard of. It is a PlayStation 3 game. My name is Dylan Ryan. I'm more games than I you. Bet. It's true. <laughs> but it is, it is true. Called, he's right. <laughs> Heavy it is, Rain. It is called El Shaddai, Ascension of the Metatron. Of course I, I know I've El Shaddai. You know El Shaddai? Only from our fucking, the video game character battle we do. One of the characters is from that. I really? platinum that game. Yeah. You, you beat El Shaddai? No, I've never even heard of it. <laughs> I've platinumed it. You have? No. <laughs> this sucks. Why are you doing this? What is no, it called? I, I have heard of it. El though. Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron. Uh, it is E-L. a weird. Yeah. E-L space Shaddai. I found it. It's, yeah. it is, I have seen this at Family Video. It is an so absolute. So he almost played it. <laughs> dog, it is an absolute trip of a video game. And it's the Book of Enoch told through like a Devil May Cry style of cell shaded combat beautiful it's beautiful yeah it's amazing it's how should i a semblance awesome. of the megatron ascension of the metatron the megatron metatron metatron megatron metatron Meta- is the voice of god directed no by Michael no it's yeah he's a transformer <laughs> it's the mouse <laughs> no Sh- that's the planet no, one Sh- el shia labeouf is <laughs> el shia labeouf el ascension shia of- ascension of the megatron el shia labeouf <laughs> ascension of the uh you want galvatron. shia labeouf to be remade galvatron <laughs> i want shia labeouf to come back but better <laughs> This guy, I've all right. I'm looking up photos of this game. Uh-huh. Who is this guy with a cell phone and every single <laughs> image? That's Metatron. That's Metatron. That's Metatron. he's the voice of God. That's the voice of God. Does he speak to you via cell phone? He's kind of a businessman for God. He's got a lot. I mean, look at that. It looks like he's standing at the end of the world. It's pretty fucking dope. I'm with Dylan on this one. I'll take it. This looks weird as fuck. I'll do it. Uh, I it would is. Love to play it. it is <laughs> incomprehensible. I own it on the PS3. Now it's a very rare game. I'm glad to have it think fuck but uh i don't know man there there's shit about that game that just does not fucking work and i'd love to see these weird kind of shots in the dark that nobody takes anymore just go for it just make it happen because i'm i'm tired of like the same cinematic spectacle being remade over and over make again some weird shit Make please. weird shit for me, please. The because first that's why of Death us. Stranding is good. Ooh. The first of us. It's literally you, you battle as a snake. No, you no play it's, as, it's you uh, play as Joel as construction job. But no, no, it's, it's no, it's baby, it's baby Joel. It's it's like a Muppet Babies, baby but Joel, and Joel, Cowboy. baby. <laughs> he won't strangle you yet. <laughs> oh, I strangled a lot of people in that game. Well, Strangled dad. Uh, uh, I don't have anything else for remakes. Jeez Louise, yeah. Um, I, I think moving forward, the industry should just consult the dog cast on what games need to be remade or re, uh, remastered. I think we have a pretty good handle on it. And uh, if we don't know, our Discord sure as hell knows. Yeah, they do. And you should probably be on that if you're not already on it. 
By the way, Brian, you read my mind. Xenogears. It's perfect. Yeah. You're so uh, right about that. We've we've had some new friends join our Patreon recently, so welcome. And if you wanted to get access to these episodes uh, well in advance, if you want to get access to a bunch of bonus top, uh, episodes, a lot of extra raw dogs, a lot of extra Elden dogs, a whole bunch of extra popcorn dogs. Don't forget about Doggies After Dark. And Doggies After Dark at the executive producer tier. Yes, there's over 50 episodes of us and our after show where it, it's fully off the rails. It's tangential to what we're talking about, but also mostly about Chuck E. Cheese. A lot about Chuck E. Cheese, like a scary amount. I mean, uh, Pasquale. P- Pequod P- Pie P- Plate. Pasquale P. Pie Plate. Uh, yes. Check out patreon.com slash hair the dog guest. And we're on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Threads, and Blue Sky. Look up Hair the Dogcast. You will find us. But we should do a one for the road. Well, thanks to executive producers, Ryan Christina, Kip Kip Kipper, Brian Ward, Jordan Hoff, Phil Wright, Phil, just Phil, Cole Delgardno, Bryant Ross, and Kelly Gutowski. Thank you for supporting us at also, the executive most, producer level. Most importantly, if you like us, tell your friends. Tell that your, is the easiest way. Tell your enemies. Go Tell on the enemies. streets drunk in the middle of the day and yell hair of the dog cast. Tie people. them up and then put it on a loudspeaker. Like uh, that Keanu like, Reeves film. Like Guantanamo Bay. Sure, that one too. That's a no. great movie. 100%. What? That's a historical yeah, fact. I just gave me Spray paint hair of the dog cast on your favorite, cor- like your favorite government building. That's Can cool. I say I that? Like Is that, that illegal? Can I say that? No one knows. We should, I like um, it. But one for the road. One for the road. Uh, mine is normally music <coughs> late, so I'm going to stick with the theme. And my one for the road is a band I just bought concert tickets for in Chicago. Uh, Mom Jean's album Sweet Tooth is fantastic all the way through. And if Sweet that's, Tooth, that's a well and good song, right? It's also an yeah, album Yeah, it's the Mom only Jean's. important well and good um, song. They are a nice Midwest emo band. I think they're from Cincinnati or some shit. But they have fantastic nah. music. I really enjoy them. And if that's not your jam, they have an album called Bear Market, which is a lot of their hits done acoustically, which I feel like is superior to all of their other albums. Wow. But very good band. Uh, check them out. Interesting. I'm going to go ahead and say the new show from FX Shogun. Can't wait to watch this. I have to watch this It's tonight. It's as good as people are saying. Okay. And people are saying... It's 10 out of 10. It's that good. Uh, It is uh, instantly entertaining. Uh, I will say I've seen the the first 15 minutes. Very entertaining. It's it's a little overwhelming in the way that when you watch Game of Thrones for the first time and they say, House Stark, House Greyjoy, this is Tyrion, this is Tywin, this is Cersei, this is Theon. And and I'm just sitting there, I'm like, I know I'm not going to get this all. Brad, you don't even know what a daimyo is. Well, now you do. Well, they said, like, my favorite anime is Dragon the Ball. And I'm like, okay, whoa, whoa. Kai, Kai, Z, what are we talking? Clock that. Clock it. I Got prefer, it. I prefer regular Dragon Ball. But mm. uh, it's it's half in English, half in Japanese. Love that. Yeah. And all of it is great. And I'm on the edge of my seat. And I can't wait to watch more. Uh, there's two episodes out now. Check out Shogun. People say it's Game of Thrones or succession, I don't get succession there at all. I don't get succession. I get a lot of Game of Thrones feels. I think people are But just, it's historically, it's based on a, a factual event, which is cool, too. I think There's a weird thing going around right now where people are just saying that something's like succession because it's good. And it's something yeah. that they're not familiar with. Well, it's about uh, familial uh, struggle and uh, uh, succession rights. It's about uh, who gets to inherit things. So I'm sure, but it's got way more of like a, you know, a feudal flavor to it than succession what era of japan is it take place? 1600s i want to say when is ghost of shishima I believe so yeah yeah that is the invasion from mongols so it is 1400s so we still have isolationist isolationist japan because it's the 17th century for shogun you would love it. it you would love it it is you would love it fantastic yeah from what i've seen yeah check it out um what is this uh, you get to recommend something, anything. Yeah, I would recommend uh, music. Um, just in general, yeah, just in general. Arms yeah. length. Um, they just had an album come out in 2022, so it's not super recent. But they're going on a tour right now, and they are 
fantastic. Nice. Um, tour a lot with uh, the kind of bands that Tyler mentioned, Mom Jeans. They're playing Wave. with uh, Ben Quad um, next week. Ben Quad, yes. Ben Quadraneros? Super <laughs> talented. <laughs> I didn't know he played music He's a as horrible. well as pod races. He's a bad sure. pod racer. Great yeah. singer. It's true. They're uh, fantastic. I love them. I've had them on repeat for the last month. So I That's, recommend them. I'm just thinking about awesome. Ben Quadraneros. No. Yeah. I recommend Ben Quadraneros. No, I'm just Ben uh, Quadraneros is fantastic as well. I mean, he doesn't even get off the starting line. <laughs> So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Still love him. I mean, you got to love him. I bet, on, I bet on him not leaving the starting he's, line. So. He's basically ahead with arms. It's great. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I was going to recommend Ham, but I'm going to. so end, weird, dude. I'm going to instead choose Dune Part 2, which I saw yesterday. Uh, Dune Part 2. It is insanely good. It, it is. It is awesome. I've heard it, that. It feels, it, it feels better than the first one because the first one is world building, and this one just lets loose in every single way that matters. And uh, at first, I was really hesitant about Timothy Chalamet as Paul Atreides, and this proves that he's got the chops to fucking play this character because there will be a third one. Well, uh, I would hope so. This move, well, this movie covers the the rest of the first book of Dune. And the third one will be uh, Dune Messiah, which could be even more interesting when you think about it. Because Anya Taylor-Joy's in this movie for probably 30 seconds. Well, it's the same thing they did with the first one, where Zendaya is there yeah. Ext- incredibly yeah. briefly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, tentatively, my pro- my plan is tomorrow night to see this movie at the theater within walking distance of my house or after I load up on edibles. Or go weird... And go see it at New Berlin because they have Screen X. Yeah, but then I can't responsibly take the amount of edibles that I want to take and go see it. But, dude, the uh, edibles plus, like, a giant screen and two more giant screens on the side. Yeah, but he's going to be too high to drive home. He's too high anyways. Too high most of the time. He's always too high. Gotta stay. Uh, 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 uh. That's a song from the aughts. Are you recommending it? No, it's terrible. <laughs> you don't recommend. I don't recommend. I recommend edibles. My one for the road is take some edibles. <laughs> I also recommend ham. It's versatile. Like in the many food. Ways. Yeah, yeah. I recommend Drive Away Dolls, the new Cohen brother, Ethan Cohen film. Uh, okay. Ooh, it is. Great. I mean, it's not ham, but you know. Ugh. It it is one of it is. <laughs> can they make ham edibles? It's one of the probably. It's one of the it. gayest movies I've ever seen. Yeah, it is so lesbian. Oh. It's all lesbian. Like all, it's got a crush down. of mine in it, Margaret Qualley. Is yeah. that the girl from the Leftovers? It's so yeah. funny and it's so Dude, she's fun. Fantastic. and Fantastic. Yeah, I like her. She's yeah. also in Death Stranding. She plays Mama. Yes, she plays Mama. Fuck, you're yeah. right. She's too young to be in Death Stranding in my mind. How old is Margaret Qualley? Uh, she she's seems like young, twenty five or twenty six. Yeah. Okay, she's a fantastic actress. I look forward to this check. Shit check out Driveway out. Dolls. It's really good. Yeah, I want to see it. It's on my list. And the whole dog cast recommends Madam Web. We haven't seen it, but just go go see it. Yeah, you guys, she's here. She's in the room with us right now. Take us out, Madam Web. I'm Dakota Johnson in secret. That's my secret identity. <laughs> I, really, I love your eyes. Thank you. They're very blue. I can see the future and the past. <laughs> We so, knew we would lose money. <laughs> so why didn't you avoid this film like the plague, Dakota? Because some things need to happen in order for the future to be saved. Also, <laughs> also, <laughs> the actors. <laughs> Tyler loves this. I the, love doing this. this the the actors, the actors in the film, were told they were going to be an MCU project. <laughs> They, Sydney, they thought that they, Sydney, Sydney, like they Sydney thought they Sweeney were going to be in like, the MCU. They oh. were pitched, and then the script changed. That's so bad. No. Yeah, uh, one of they the, were misled on purpose. <laughs> but this the, is the Dogcast. We love you. We'll see you next time. Yeah, Doggies we, After Dark. We live in a godless universe. Bye. <laughs>